<laughs> this week, we're going to talk about raising cigar prices. Well, that's a bad idea for all of us that like to buy lots of cigars. Some cigars <laughs> we've smoked, some we want to smoke. The future of Davidoff, smoking cigars in the wind, interesting branding. And this week, we, in a new twist, we're smoking the Calibra. That's right. You'll learn a little more about the Calibra and the ones that we're smoking. All that and more on this episode of the Stogie Geek Show. This is Security Weekly, for security professionals, by security professionals. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote Drew, who is remote over in Texas. Look at you. You got some story geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm all set up for the uh, Stoke Geek uh, mobile lounge. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. I'm Paul Asadorian. Very excited to be here this week. Did you see Book of Boba Fett? I did. Like a bantha. Uh-huh. Right? <laughs> That's, <laughs> right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Oh, my God. My son and I are, like, addicted. That's and, awesome. And, and we didn't watch The Mandalorian together. Yeah. So we're going to go do that now. You should so, watch it. We yeah, won't give you any spoilers yeah, yeah, on the show. You yeah. If I you're mean, a Star son, Wars fan, you should watch yeah. it. And you're going to fall in one or two camps. You're going to yep. either really love it or you're going to uh-huh. hate it and complain loudly about it on social mm-hmm. media. Mr. Joe Zempa's here with us. What's up? How are you? I'm good. Jason Albuquerque, hey, of course, hey. here in studio. Hello, hello. What's going on? Great to Remotely, be here. Mr. Adrian de Sanabria. What's going on, Adrian? Hi there. Yeah, my oldest just let me know that they started watching, uh, they, they saw the first episode of Mr. Robot, and I was like, ah, we got to watch the rest of that together, because <laughs> I, I, I never finished it. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Um, you no, know I've I, only seen, like, the first four or five episodes. You know what? I went, uh, is it going to be a spoiler if I talk about, they ever see the movie Lone Wolf and Cub? No. I can do it without spoiling it. So, uh, as we know, Akira Kurosawa drew heavily from uh, Japanese films mm-hmm. uh, in making, uh, specifically Akira Kurosawa, right? But in recent shows, there was homage paid to another Japanese film called Lone Wolf and Cub. And so uh, they made these movies, a series of three or four movies called Lone Wolf and Cub, mm-hmm. right? In like the 70s in Japan. They're awesome samurai movies. Uh, and it's all about the samurai that goes around with his son to take take revenge, like most good mm-hmm. martial arts films, mm-hmm. right? We got to take revenge. And so they edited down because, you know, American audiences, we can't watch an original Japanese film with, with subtitles because that's, that's beyond us because we're <laughs> barbarians. So they have to take all three or four of those films and edit yeah. them down into one film and put an English dub over it, which was called, does anyone know the name of the movie? Samurai Assassin. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, which has been sampled in Wu Tang albums. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, featured yeah. in Kill yep. Bill. Yep. I think vol- the end of Kill Bill, the end of Kill Bill Volume 2, which means the daughter, is that one or two? 
I don't. I think yeah, it's two it's like, at the end, two. right? Yeah, yeah. Which means the daughter and the daughter's watching a movie. That's the movie that they're playing. Um, mm. So anyway, Lone Wolf and Cub has this very well. It's famous in in my mind because I'm a huge film buff. Uh, it's a very famous scene, and it's also sampled in a Wu Tang album, mm. the English dub version of this scene, right? And it's a scene where uh, his the, the samurai and his son. So the mom has been murdered, and he's like, "All right, son, look." You, I got a sword and I got a ball. And if you choose the ball, you join your mother in death. If you choose the sword, you come fight with me. Right? And that scene is mirrored in mm. some of the newer Star Wars things, which I, which I won't spoil. <laughs> I mean, down to the way the sword is held and how it's filmed. So I actually went back and watched the first Lone Wolf and Cub Sword of Vengeance in its original audio. Yeah. You have to watch it in, in the original audio. The actor, I forget his name, who plays... Um, the main character in that film is an amazing actor and the like the scenes are awesome mm. like he gets the samurai sword out and he's just quick with it and it's flying around and like he'll be sitting and like two people come up behind him and he just the sword comes out and, whoosh, 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 and he puts it away and then the guys just like blood starts spraying and they start slowly falling to the ground it's awesome <laughs> it's awesome <laughs> awesome stuff. I love it gonna have to watch it yeah it's good stuff all right so now that we've got everyone caught up in what we're watching, uh, what do you guys want to talk about first? <laughs> Why don't we talk about what we're smoking that's, today? That's, you know what? Yeah, why don't Jason, we start there? Because this is interesting. This is, this is um, interesting. So we're smoking. This is from, let me see if I can pull it, 2012? Yeah, 20, all right, let's see. Uh, uh, the original Old Man and Sea, uh, this was first seen in 2011, officially released in 2012. And I had a couple of these. This is the, the box it comes in. I had a couple of these uh, in my humidor. And uh, this is what it looks like in its original packaging. So uh, it came in this wooden coffin. And the silver foil right here is the Culebra. Uh, three cigars, usually Panatella 6x38, uh, all uh, wrapped together, coiled uh, together. And so it comes with one of those and uh, a Triumphador Black Label Lancero or a Black Label Lancero. I think the Lancero is Black Label and the Culebra is the Triumphador blend. I believe that that was what, and, and there's a whole, if you look these up online, excuse me, the, on a half wheel, you know, it's good the whole story from uh, Pete Johnson founder of Tatawahe Cigars, you know, when he was like on, va you know, not on vacation, but traveling and he met the guy that came from the factory and handed him a cigar and kind of, you know, inspired this whole thing. And, you know, many of us know the story. And it's pretty cool. So I had some of these kicking around on my humidor. And I was like, wow, these are like, now these are 10 years old. We should probably <laughs> smoke them. <laughs> yeah. So I will um, I will say this is my first experience with a Culebra cigar, and, and that's what sparked it. Is Jason had not smoked a Culebra cigar. Unfortunately, Adrian, due to my poor planning, uh, Adrian had to find another. But you're smoking a Tatawahe from the Monster series. I I had to slum it. Mm. Well, you're not slumming it <laughs> no, by any stretch. No. What are you smoking, Adrian? I'm smoking a uh, Skinny Monster, a Tatawahe um, uh, Jekyll. Mm. And that was the 2014 release, and I've actually got some of those kicking around. Um, these are smoking really good right now, by the way. The original 2014 release, yeah. smoking pretty awesome. Let's see if you have them. Now is, now is probably time to smoke them. <laughs> um, but back to the Culebra. Do you, do you guys, I know Joe probably knows this. Uh, Adrian, Jason, do you know where the, the Culebra uh, came from? I do not. Tell so, me the story. Tell me the story. It's a fable, basically. Because like I thought it was gospel, yeah, right? Like yeah. not everything you read on the internet is true. Right. Not everything you yeah. hear as yeah. a you know. In, in more recently, people have described it as a fable. But basically, the way the fable goes on Culebra cigars is that the rollers in the factory could roll cigars to smoke in the factory while they worked, and roll cigars to take home with them. Now. So, because, like, you know, if we were in the factory rolling cigars, we'd have, like, a giant bag, and we'd mm. be like, oh, right, one for the box, one for me, one for the box, one for me. And we'd walk <laughs> one, out, two for me, like, one for the box, bag, yeah, huge, one, two for yes, me. Yes. <laughs> like, ah, oh, yeah, they're taking all these home with that's me, right? It. So to prevent that, they told the rollers. Fired in the first week. <laughs> that's it. So they told the rollers, you can only take home one cigar per day, which is fair. Yeah. 
And the fable goes that that's where they came up with the Culebra cigar, where they underfill and uh, moisten more than you would uh, when you're rolling a single cigar. Yeah. Uh, the 6x38 pan Panatellas, and they twisted them together. I should open this other one up so you can see it. And they twisted them together, put it in their shirt pocket, and go, hey, that's my one cigar, but it's really three cigars. Yeah. Which is like, I mm. loved it because it's kind of like a hack, right? Sure. Like yeah, a hack 100%. in the system. I'm like, 100%. I love it. It's great. Yeah, yeah. And then they're like, no, that, that really wasn't true. Like, it was really just kind of rolled as a novelty kind of thing. And it oh. really wasn't true that people did that. <laughs> I have another. Because uh, I like the story way better. Yeah. <laughs> so I like the hackings because we do security, totally. right? So we're I'm sticking in, with the hack. You know, I'm, I'm sticking, sticking with, with the hack. hack. I like the hack that they were hacking it, right? Listen, perception can become reality. So let's <laughs> make perception reality with this story. <laughs> let's see if I can get that. So the hard part about these Culebras is that they're in this uh, foil paper. And they're they're taped like pretty pretty heavily, and so when you open this, see, and you gotta be careful. You don't want to damage it as you open the. They don't all come in this foil. This was just for this packaging. So as you can see, there's three cigars twisted together, right? And then um, about like half an inch or so in, they tie it with string to hold them together. Uh, and that's what the the Culebra looks like. And I'm always that's amazed every cool. time I smoke one of these. I'm like, I can't believe it smokes. Like, there's like, there's no way I'm gonna be able to light this thing up and smoke it. But they do, which is pretty awesome. Sorry, Joe, you were trying to say something. No, it's okay. Um, two things. I have a question for you. Mm. Uh, has Joe Hollywood lost its lackluster? Yeah, we like don't a, use the Joe Hollywood like like. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm just you like, like lost the nickname, dude. Like, 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 like you're in the intro. It calls you in the intro. Yeah, but, Joe but like, no, like when I first started walking this building, Paul would call me Joe Hollywood. All like, oh, gotcha, like, gotcha. Am I losing my lackluster? Oh, maybe you need to dress nicer. I don't know. Maybe we... I'm just, if you go back in the episode, I'm the same way. What do yeah. you mean? Did I start dressing nice? I don't know. Maybe it's, I mean I dressed down today. I didn't like wear a jacket. And a, wait a minute, maybe <laughs> that's all. It's just a question. Like, I'm am I most am I losing week. my mojo now that I got two kids? And I mean, I don't know. I don't, right, I don't know. Cool. <laughs> Sometimes nicknames come and go. <laughs> all right, that's cool. Anyway, uh, I've heard part of the part of the the myth and legend yes. of how these came about was uh, I did hear the, your your story and then it combined them. But they were only allowed to smoke the crooked cigars on yes. the floor You're so correct. that they know for inventory. So they're not smoking inventory. Right. Oh. So it's probably. So they get to smoke the irregular cigars. Yeah, but, but these. So in other words, if they were yeah. rolling and smoking. Yeah. Because you could technically take home a cigar like Paul said. Yeah. But would you be smoking on the floor during the day? Right, you know what I mean. Right. So yeah. right, 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 smoking is right. so in it's, one article it says smoking a straight cigar could be recognized as stealing. Yes, just smoking one that could have gone in a box and gone to a customer, right? Mm -hmm. But if it's got a sunspot on it, some manufacturers don't like to put seconds. that in. Yeah, yeah. So it's, seconds are kind of a farce, but like sunspots are just a naturally occurring uh, phenomena in the leaf. Right, and it's just like a, a blemish, if yeah. you will. It doesn't. I don't think it affects anything to have new the cigar. But as a manufacturer, you might not want to put that in the box. You get a consumer that's like, "Oh my god, what's that big spot on the cigar?" Like mm. we look at it and go, "That's that's just a sunspot." Sure, totally fine. Yeah. Um. So that might be the ones that they smoke, or the ones that are somewhat crooked or whatever mm. would be the ones they're smoking in the factory. Yeah, I'd be like smashing the ones I rolled. Oh, they're all bad. They're all bad. <laughs> All bad. Yeah. I, I will say ergonomically, it's odd. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> like, this isn't one you want oh, yeah, to smoke, it, like, when you go right, for a walk right. or you're playing golf or, uh, you know, whatever. Like, you want to be seated in a lounge um, and be very cautious when you put them in the ashtray. Totally. Because they I, don't. I, I literally put it in the ashtray and I got shot with ash. Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> it's just awkward. And, like, God forbid you're at a, a you know, lounge or somewhere that has the ashtray on a stand. Yeah. And you put it in the stand and then it just kind of rolls right, right. off. Like, there's no way to. Or falls on the floor. It's right. awkward, Adrian. Right. It's awkward. So be yeah, careful. It's. it's I, I could imagine you, you smoking it in public and people being like, what the hell did you. Like, if they're not familiar mm -hmm. with that kind of cigar. Like. What the hell the did hell you do? Sit that? on your cigar? Like, <laughs> yeah. Did you, just, you what, did you just, just custom roll something and bring it in? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but what's interesting is that I, I just I'm amazed that like that it actually smokes. Like the draw, it, it is it like does. it's like yeah. smokes like a regular totally. cigar. It yep. doesn't have all these bends and curves and twists in it, right? But when you get to the taste of this, it is tasty. Mm. Yeah, it is. I told Jason pre-show. It is. He's like, "What are we smoking?" And I told him and. 
And I'm like, just grab an extra one. Because my only complaint about these in general. They smoke fast, right. They just smoke fast. Because yeah. they underfill so, them um, to, get the, right, to get the curve, right, which right. is probably why they smoke yep, fast. Yep. It, they just smoke. In the, in, and just like you said, they're very delicate. Yes. Like, you got to be, like, freaking dainty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. the some of the wrapper, you know, when we unwound these three. Yeah. Uh, yep. Kind of got, like, a little damaged on them. Yeah. Not not horrible, but I think all three of ours might have, like, a little a little bit of a wrapper kind of peeling away. Yeah. My, like, on the on the curve. Like, yes. On, Just, the, on, the, on the inside of the yeah, elbow, let's call it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that the humidity is a little low. Not really. Not with this one. Adrian, um, uh, D, uh, PM me your uh, ad- address. We have a couple of boxes, and I'll give one to Jason too, uh, in the humidor. Okay. Uh, not of these, but it's, yeah, we got all it's, the yeah. it's yeah. the actual there, so you can kind of experience yeah. it. And by the way, if you cut it at home, you can smoke it on three separate instances. Just don't put it on like a portable humidor, because when it starts getting bumping and all of that, it's, a, yeah, it's right, delicate. Yeah, yeah. It's delicate, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm still just amazed that they smoke. It's pretty... Uh, yeah, but I, I tell mean, you what, though, the flavor's from, good. Well, I was it's, gonna say, yeah, the, the flavor's flavor's good. 2012. Good. So th- these are 10 years old. Man, these held up in 10 yeah. years. Yeah. Like it's it's smooth. It's creamy. It's it's yeah. I dig it's it. Still got a ton of flavor yeah, left. Yeah, I it. dig it. Yeah, you're getting creaminess. You're getting mm-hmm. a little bit of nut, and you're getting a. L- you can tell it was stronger pepper. It's got that yeah. faded pepper to it, but um, it's the classic tatuaje. Definitely hasn't aged out. No, it's got that no. classic Tatuaje white pepper that I. In ten just, years is a long time for oh, something yeah. to be sitting in your own humidor, right? Mm-hmm. Didn't we just do a previous show saying six to five years is the magic yeah, number? Yeah, and now here we are that, smoking again, ten. But you know, it's like wine. Um, not so much like spirits because once they hit the glass, they yeah. don't age. But I think part of being a connoisseur or in wine a sommelier is knowing when the optimum time to drink that wine or smoke that cigar is mm-hmm. and that's that's just experience that's having enough of it to go mm. you know my break open if i break open that bottle now i don't know where you guys fall on i had the struggle with wine i'm not huge in, into wine i mean i love wine yeah but i know once i crack a bottle open a wine like i'm, I'm pretty much drinking the whole thing you're in because my wife does not mm. like the red wines yeah. so much you know, she's more into the the lighter kind of wine, sangria, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff, which makes for a cheaper trip to the liquor store. <laughs> um, which means I get to, so I I totally the budget then shifts. So Paul gets to spend a little more on a bottle mm-hmm. of wine or scotch because you know sangria is ten dollars a bottle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's nice. Um, but yeah, if, they say if, even with liquor, like mm-hmm. you need to consume it within a couple months or something like that. Yeah, that was a good question, Adrian. Uh, after we've all, opening it, we've all got that uh, spirit, mm-hmm. like an old bottle of vermouth or Kahlua that yeah. someone gave as a Christmas gift or for you, mixing or something like that yeah. for cocktails. Yeah, and like you know, ten, fifteen years ago, you stuffed it in the back, and if you didn't <laughs> yeah. move this way to the back of your liquor cabinet, is that, that's like a no no go, right? That's not no good. Uh, especially probably. with like a Bailey's or a probably Kahlua, mm. I, I don't know if I'd go down that path. What yeah. about like a vodka? Does that go bad? I don't think so. I think you're all right. I, mean, I think no. you're all right. I mean, I, I mean, I have bottles of whiskey that are on my shelf that are a couple years, three years old. I'll, yeah, I'll drink it. Adrian, certain certain spirits better than others. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the TV's right behind Jason's head. I was I was trying to grab his head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, should, yeah, should I not be drinking that bottle of a couple of year old whiskey? <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I've never had one stick around that long. To be honest, I've never been one of those people. With, you know, like the huge collection of whiskeys yeah, and stuff like that. Problem. Like, like I'll buy four or five bottles, and they're they're gone within a couple of months, and then buy four or five other bottles. So, yeah. uh, but we did actually look it up. Uh, we had a I had a short lived uh, podcast. Uh, I wasn't the main host, but uh, it was Booze Hackers. And that question came up on, on nice. one of our podcasts, and we look it up, and they, they I forget what you call whiskey sommeliers, but basically mm. they say, yeah, you, you should you should aim to consume it within uh, a, a couple of months. Really? So, a couple wow. of months yeah. from buying the bottle? Wow. Yep. I'm way off. Well, from and it opening still tastes it. fine to me, I guess. I don't no, know. From, <laughs> from opening it. If it's unopened, it, you're fine. It. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, once well, it's so open I'm and bad breathing. At that. If mm-hmm. I go buy three or four bottles of whiskey... The first, you know, couple of nights I have that brand new batch. Yeah. I'm like, I want to try that one, and I'll have right. a glass or two. Right. And then the next two bottles, the next but, night, I'm like, I want to try those two bottles. And 
I mean, if you got four yeah, bottles, I do, I do the yeah, same then thing. Then you to talk about how but much let's, you drink. Let's, no let's one wants to admit how much you actually drink. Like, let's, we're not going there. Let, <laughs> let's be honest, though. If you can't tell the difference, mm. right? That, does it matter? Mm. Is it correct? Yeah, I mean, I've had bottles stick around for a, a while. Me no too. more, no more than a year or two, two, uh, two gone, years would I've be. I've gone beyond a year. I have, and I have, have you whiskey, ever drunk whiskey it, that I it really, out? really like that I don't want to drink all the time. Yeah, and I break it out for special occasions. Right, but yeah, I could no, be, no, I I could be drinking right? it three times yeah. a year. Yeah, Adrian, I've never been like, oh, that's terrible because it's been sitting around either, for so long. Ever. Yeah, you're not doing a spit take. <laughs> mm. So now here's a question for you. I have a bottle of Glenfiddich Twelve. That my father-in-law got in like the late '80s, early '90s. Ooh, not opened. Not opened. Still on my shelf. Not opened in the actual mm -hmm. uh, case. Yeah. Still. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't oh, even seen good. daylight. Mm. That's good. That's the key. Since I like think, the Jason. Eight, late '80s or '90s, but early I '90s. From what I understand, I think though, that's the key. It'll be fine. Yeah. yeah, it'll be fine. But I don't think it's going to be any better than if you went to the store and bought a bottle of Glenfiddich Twelve. Mm -hmm. No, in fact, I've heard stories of people finding uh, old bottles of bourbon and stuff like that from like the 50s in an attic or something like that. Yeah. So first of all, in the summers, it gets hot in the attic. So temperature yep. has probably yep. done something with it. Yep. But uh, apparently from what I've heard, like quality control wasn't that great for liquor back then. And just like taste in general, mm. like like your your typical bottles of bourbon, just, you know, like the blenders and all that, like they weren't nearly as scientific and precise as they are today. Mm. So every single case of that I've heard where somebody opens this old bottle of whiskey they found in their grandpa's attic, awful. Mm. Undrinkable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, there's also a difference between a distilled spirit and a fermented uh, spirit. Yeah. So wine and beer are fermented. That right. needs to be kept at a certain temperature. Mm. Whiskey, I, mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, Adrian, I don't think keeping it in an attic that gets over 100 degrees is probably a great idea. I don't think it hurts it as much. If that were wine or beer, it would definitely hurt it more because it's a fermented mm. spirit. And fer fermentation still happens and aging with wine and beer in the container that they put it in, right? Because there's usually some yeast left over and, yeah. and that kind of thing. So there's a chemical process still happening. Once that distilled spirit hits the glass, from my understanding, like there's no chemical process that's happening after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, yeah, uh, I'm interested. I've 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 been holding off on cracking it open, mm. just out of trust <laughs> whether or not I should. You know what we should do? You should go buy a brand new bottle. Mm. Yeah, so side I'll, by, I'll go buy a brand side new by bottle. Side it and blind, you bring yours in, test? and we'll we'll blind oh, taste test it and that. see if we can tell the let's difference. It's a good idea. That'd be fun. That would be really fun. And it'd be worth cracking it open for the show. Like, let's, yeah. Yeah. Let's do it'd that. Be fun. I like it. All right. Adrian, you're just going to have to start flying down for these. Seriously. Flying up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you got the right uh, lineup. Uh, I, I'd be, I'd definitely be tempted to do it. All right. Well, so let's figure that out, and I'll bring the bottle when you come. Yes. That's it. That's the reason for you to come. We are All right. on the Security Weekly side next month. Uh, a lot of the hosts are excited because we've got General Keith Alexander uh, coming on the show. Mm. Uh, I know those of you in cigars may not follow security, but General Keith Alexander was the uh, head of the NSA mm -hmm. during Obama. Was it only? I believe so. It was Obama, right? It must so. have been Obama the whole time. It was definitely his second term, I know, from someone I just spoke with. Um, and, but I think that would have been through Obama's first and almost all of his second term before it turned over to Mike Rogers. So people are really excited to come here. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, uh, I did. I wanted to. This one is just kind of really irk me. I feel like we just we got to get it over with. Mm. You sent an article, Jason. Yeah. Thank you. By the way, I did get all of your articles. And I did add them all to the show awesome. notes. Um, the PCA Premium Cigar Association sends a message on responsible marketing. Yeah, the gist I got from this was don't package or market or brand cigars that are intended for adults to in in a, in, way. in a way that could be marketed towards children right i mean we've we've seen this now my counterpoint to this is other industries <laughs> alcohol and marijuana if, an, if anyone that's gone into a liquor store and looked at some of the things mm -hmm. that you can buy that are packaged for alcohol there are you could find in a liquor store probably 20% of their stock 
would be in violation the way the PCA has defined it here. Literally, this is what sets me on fire. On fire. Go, go into your liquor store and go to the microbrewery section. No, all, even better. Yeah. Go to the freezer and you will find freeze pops, which, <laughs> which, which are awesome, by the way. Like, they are so awesome in the summer. And a huge hit at party. I showed up to a neighborhood party mm -hmm. and I had adult freeze pops that I had bought at the liquor store. And, like, everyone was like, this was the best thing yeah. ever. They taste so good. And you get like a little buzz from oh, it. But, but the here, packaging, here's the, thing, though. the you, kids would see them and be like, oh, can I have one? I'm like, no, 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 these are like adult freeze pops. They're like, what are you talking? So make sure you bring kid freeze pops with seriously. you so they can have one. But I mean, it's right in front of you. So so mm -hmm. if I go into a liquor store and I have my son with me walking through and I go to the IPA section, right? I like my IPAs. To this day, my son's like, dad, dogs and boats? Yeah. Dogs and boats? Kittens and canoes? Right. Come on. I mean, think about that for a hot minute, right? And And correct me if I'm wrong, though. The tobacco industry can't go out there and actively market in in the sense of marketing. There right? are restrictions. There's restrictions. On there, there are restrictions. Right. On marketing. So, so there's all these. Let's go back to the world of, of cybersecurity yeah, Jewel, and compliance. Jewel got there's stopgaps. Hard on that. <laughs> what, what's that, Adrian? Jewel got hit hard on that. Oh, I, I think yeah. they 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 got fined quite a bit. Yeah, you know, for marketing for towards yeah. Uh, yeah. kids. Yeah, vapes is another thing too. Uh, although a lot of states like Rhode Island have have been the kind of flavored right. stuff. Right. We just Anyway, we can talk it, about that. But. It's Nick. The The term is Nick now. Oh, is that the new term for it? Yeah, you, you, you hit a Nick oh, is how how the kids be saying it. Be saying it's it. The, the current vernacular. You hit a that, Nick. Adrian. Yeah. But, but, but yeah, they the, go in the bathroom in high school and they, and they hey, can I hit your Nick? <laughs> you oh, <God>. want to? <laughs> oh, but also the, the marijuana <laughs> industry certainly is also another example we can point to because they get to make... If you've ever seen how edibles are packaged, it looks like candy. And like some of them mm -hmm. actually mimic or mirror actual candy like what are the ropes? What are the ropes called? Um it's it's regular candy. Twizzlers? But, no, that's like Twizzlers. A, oh, like the thin ones, like the the sugar Oh, ones? the yeah, thin yeah, ones yeah, that yeah. you pull apart? No, it's like a a something rope. I don't know, fruit rope or whatever they they call it and it's like a regular candy, but they also make a like a marijuana version of oh. it. And like, where's the restriction? Oh, like fruit leather? Yeah. No, it's like a. It's got like fruit hard by the foot. Hard candy on the outside, like crunchy stuff on the outside, and it's almost like a Twizzler softer candy on the inside. Huh. I forget what they're yeah. they're called, but, yeah. hmm. but. But any kind of gummy bears and, and all that stuff are stuff of kids are. Yeah, right. If kids were to look at the packaging, from like we said, most like not most, but some stuff at the liquor store, some stuff at your marijuana dispensary. And maybe even some stuff with the, the right. vaping and all that, it, it would look like it's marketed towards kids. But God forbid yeah. we make tobacco that has anything to do right. you know, with kids. That's right. Can't I mean, advertise I, on I, TV, can't I, advertise through Facebook, the whole thing. Yeah, it drives me crazy. I, mean, I, I, I don't know if these are urban legends, but I've heard stories about uh, not kids, but like grandparents. Uh, you know, like eating the wrong brownies and yes. stuff like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it's not just kids. I, I I sit back and I wonder what the intent behind that message was, right? What's the mm -hmm. intent behind? Why are they putting it out there? Well, they say it at the end, like, don't brand... Someone did actually brand a cigar with Cookie Monster on it. It was... Yeah, but that's a lost and found. Yep. That's, a, that's a lost and found Call, drop. The, same thing. Also, Caldwell with the pepper cream soda. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not candy, but uh, Rojas with the street tacos. I mean, using trendy names. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Ezra Zion with the Cinnabon. Mm -hmm. Is that Dude, every, everything. Like, I mean, uh, see, the problem is, see, here's the problem, right? The, it, the, here comes the hate mail from, from your former host, right? Uh, you know, the problem is the PCA can't get out of its own way. What they want to do is they want to say, look, FDA, we're going to play real, real nice. We're going to play nice. So yeah. can you yeah. please yeah. leave us alone? Mm -hmm. Because we promise we won't put. And by the way, like, vo like I don't know, you go to a bar and, 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 and the bar's lit up with the vodkas and you got like cotton candy. Yeah, right. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, totally. Espresso. It's got cake, layer mm -hmm. cake. Because, oh, there's a layer cake by, um, uh, vi uh, by Viaje. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's like, it's like why can't we just... You, first of all, it's regulated on social media with no tobacco, alcohol, or firearms. So mm -hmm. it's regulated on social media. And, like, if we put, like, layer cake or birthday cake or, or something like that, like, it, it's taking the consumer back, the cigar consumer, yep. back to his or her childhood. 
where brands and marketing were important since the days of cold cereal, right? So us as kids, now obviously I have a three and a half year old, so I see this. He sits on the table. Now he's getting to, I want to view the cereal box while I eat mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And he's looking at all the things. And we all did my it as kids. The, kids. the s'more cereal? Yeah. 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 Everyone oh, yeah. loves yeah. that in my house. You know, so it doesn't last. My kid my likes Cinnamon Toast stuff. Crunch. He calls it SpongeBob's. But yeah. now he, <laughs> but, <laughs> but now it, it's graduated to its proper name. But like, they're the reading the back of the box. It's how they get their information. It's their world. And us like, as... Us as cigar consumers, it kind of takes us back consumer wise to our childhood where we read the back of the cigar box, yeah, like we did as kids. Mm-hmm. So I you're know, denying us point. our privilege. But also, would you rather have your kid try and smoke a cigar? And I, I put the word "try" in there for a reason, <laughs> or drinking alcohol, or consuming a massive amount of edibles, which is <laughs> alcohol is way more dangerous. Now you're doing risk management. You're tearing yes. risk. Yeah, right? tearing risk. <laughs> yeah. And, I love it. Alcohol is way more dangerous than marijuana. Like uh, I've, I've read, I I've read a book and like oh, listened yeah. to people and, and yeah, studied right. some of the science. Like you can overdose on marijuana. I don't want to. I don't want to throw that out there. Like there is a psychosis that happens with Ain't marijuana. Nearly as easy. Yeah, but you have to smoke a lot of it for a really long time. You consume enough alcohol, you can die way more quickly oh, and yeah. suffer yeah, ill right. consequences way more quickly than yeah. than marijuana. Now I. It's funny, I, this happened at my house. I pulled a, a moldy cigar out of my humidor. And I left it on top of my humidor. And my oldest son went in there and like tried to light it. <laughs> I don't think he's, he smoked it, but like, even if like he's, he's uh, 13, right? And, like, even if he tried to smoke it, he'd be like, that's disgusting, right? Like, yeah, you don't totally. usually develop a palate for that kind of stuff. Like, like you have to know how to cut the you have to know yeah. to cut the end. I mean, I mean, he the, the wrong is, end of it, the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <I'm> like, <laughs> dude, if you want to try and smoke a cigar, like my wife and I both the same thing. Like, you want to try and smoke a cigar? Like, just sit down with dad and try and smoke a cigar. I guarantee you, you're not gonna right. like it. My nephew well, just went off to college, right? And it was his senior year in high school before he was like, yeah, I, uncle, I like smoking cigars. So now we smoke cigars together as often as we can, right? Yep. And it, I think you. The whole thing of targeting towards kids, in my experience, it doesn't even really appeal to kids until no, they are no, 18, not at all. right? And right. they're and in, in 18 legal smoking age in most areas. <clears throat> many have moved to 21, whatever. Yeah, but also yeah, look, look look at alcohol though. Mm. Like like there's alcohol where you can't taste the alcohol in it. Like it, mm. it tastes like a kid's mm. drink. Like right? my adult like, and, and yeah. the right. taste. But I, I mean, there's not a cigar where the cigar taste is is hidden like like if yeah, you even don't flavored have taste, cigars <laughs> yeah but even flavored like, like, cigars adrian to your point they they taste like a cigar right, right. with yeah. some other flavoring yeah, it's not in it. much less likely to appeal to kids they're, they're yeah. going to go for for vapes and stuff like that because right. i mean that that's the niche that vape fills is like when you you want the nicotine but you don't want the flavor of tobacco right right or they buy <clears> cheap <throat> cigars and they put marijuana in it i mean let's not <laughs> right let's not like talk about the elephant in the room like if it even is that like that that's see here's what i think the argument should be right we obviously all all of us have kids right mm-hmm. so it's to me it's a two-tier problem right if you take cigars out of the equation and you're and you're catering to kids it's what dad does or fill in the x right it's what mom does right so in other words if the kids like you know if dad smokes cigars you're not catering to kids it's just what dad does you go fishing a lot with your kid yep whether you have a cigar or not that's your business but you know something always it's always, what, no always. But, but but it's just what dad does it's not like the kid's gonna come and, out and, and beer, say and beer by the way sure sure <laughs> but like 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 my kid fishing's really just an excuse to drink beer and have a cigar, have a cigar. by the way <laughs> <laughs> but but like like when it comes to like like the, the not PC- for the kids though not for the kids <laughs> or, or, or to get some quiet yeah mm-hmm. but when it comes to like the PCA and they're trying to do that like this argument has been going on since probably the fifties if not the forties if you did some research there's always like that catering and tobacco's got the mm-hmm. stigma alcohol has the stigma and the government's trying to be you know I mean look at music let's say we were doing a show say we. Well, all four of us never smoked cigars, and we were really into hip hop. We could turn around and say, "Okay, well, back in the '90s, they took the parent explicitory lyrics and oh, whatnot." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all. Oh, yeah. So right, it's right. the same concept. So also, you, so also, great Super Bowl halftime show. <laughs> 
Agreed. I think Agreed. If, if you're Agreed. between, and, he, and here's where people are yelling at me right now. They're like, because if you're under 30, you're like, who the hell were those mm -hmm. people? If you're over 50, you're like, where's Prince or you two? Yeah. And where's you the Rolling Stones? Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And no, everyone agreed, 30 to agreed. 50 was agreed. like, hell yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's it was my good. Jam. It was good. Good halftime show. Talk about catering to your audience. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I, but also, but Just, also, it was in LA. And sure. everyone who appeared on stage. Well, well except, no. for Mary, except for Mary J. Blige. And 50 Cent. He's not from LA, is he? Uh, but he, Dre produces him. Uh, well, I, right. But yeah. that, that, and that's so what I was trying it, to explain to everybody at the Super Bowl party that I was at. Do you call 50 Cent West Coast or East Coast or. Where is he from? He's I don't from East Coast, I thought. Uh, New York, right? Is he? I thought so, originally. Yeah, Dre definitely produced him, though. But that's what I was trying to explain to everybody who was at the Super Bowl party I was at, mm -hmm. is that this was a 100% Dre production. They right. brought in all the big names that Dre right. had a piece he of. He didn't exclusively produce Mary J. Blige, but he, he did on did, a couple yeah, of albums. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, an album yeah, or two 100%. or whatever. Yeah. But Eminem, Kendrick Lamar, uh -huh. those were all produced mm -hmm. by Dre. Yep, totally. But, um, but to that point, I mean... This is 100% pandering to regulation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? And, 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 and I understand. But is, that bad, is that a bad strategy, I though? I understand the pressures, though. Like, mm -hmm. I get that piece of it. But I almost feel like instead of creating more silos and divisive relationships, I think the industry should be coming together to go against the regulation and educate folk, folks who are in, you know, Washington, D.C. so they can influence the FDA. Why are we gonna? Why are we gonna build walls, right? Instead of bringing us all together and we're all on the same page, advocating for the industry. We're better together. We're stronger together, right? I mean, that's my personal opinion. Is that we're stronger together. So why are you gonna start siloing out these companies who? Yeah, I think I'd, I'd get behind it if it was a short-term strategy to be like, and if everyone got together and was like, look, everything else aside, let's not do branding that paints us in a bad light like right now, and. Maybe that gives us a little more leverage and a little more voice and influence to go to them and say, like, look, we're backing off on some of this branding stuff, but we really want to make sure that we get regulations that's fair to everyone, earn some respect, and, and, and start changing things. The only reason I'll disagree with that statement is because it, understanding the bureaucracy of government, it's called a slippery slope when you do that. Yeah, what yeah. are they going to take next? But that's they the don't thing. give back; yeah. they take. They take. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, my only. That's my only. But also, concern there. the the flaw in that is a longer term strategy. I mean, you're not dealing with the same administration or even the same director of the FDA that you were this year as opposed to next year. Mm -hmm. And we actually had a, uh, we got a new one. Uh, Coop Coop talked about how we got a new one, right? Yeah. So U.S. Uh, Senate confirms Dr. Robert Califf as FDA commissioner. How? No matter your political side team, what FDA director do you know that will ever pull back restrictions on tobacco? What kind uh, of tobacco? Any kind of tobacco. Once, once it's in place, the once that regulation and that standard is in place, do you know anybody who would have the intestinal fortitude to start decreasing regulation on tobacco? What we need is an FDA commissioner <laughs> that really loves cigars. But you guess what I'm saying, that's though, right? You need. understand what I'm saying, though, right? Yeah. But they're not going to appoint someone that's not going to go after tobacco. Uh, you think regardless of political party? I, I don't think it's a good... It will never be a good optic, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, to take a restriction on tobacco that's in place and lessen it. Mm. That's a yeah. bad yeah. political optic. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. Because it doesn't, slope. it doesn't fit the narrative that tobacco is bad. Ah, right. That's the problem, right? So we're dealing with this narrative that exists. We're dealing with a perception that exists. And people will get crucified in Washington, D.C. if they start pulling regulation back. I hate the narratives. <laughs> Damn it. it that, it's, it's unfortunately the political climate, right? Mm hmm yeah, they're never going to yeah, give they, it back. So do you agree? Mm -hmm. So do you agree with the PCA's methodology of them wanting to play nice? I I think it's, I mean if we don't give it too much ground and we can, it, it means we get some advances. Then I I like to play nice. I think part of politics and playing in the political game is sometimes you got to play nice. Adrian, sorry, you had a comment. 
No, I was just going to make the general comment that, uh, I mean, you guys have already hit it, you know, that there's this uh, grouping of, of topics that are always safe to hate on, mm -hmm. yes. you know, it, you know, porn, Vax vaccines, substances. Yeah, vaccines are good. Yeah. Porn is bad. Um, what are some of the other? Tobacco is yeah, bad. Guns are bad. Political correctness is, yeah. is good. Right. Right. And if it's, you chat, I mean, look at, look at Rogan, right? Uh, that's. I don't. It doesn't matter your opinion on Rogan, and if you have an opinion, I respect your opinion. It's a rabbit hole we could go down. Rogan, oh my right? god, for hours. I respect your opinion on Whoopi Goldberg. My fear is that, regardless of your your thoughts and views, you you should have a platform, right? It, it, to a certain degree. And if you say something wrong, like I've been doing podcasting for sixteen years, I've, I've said some shit wrong. And I apologize, make a correction, yeah. and we move on. If we can't do that, that's what mm -hmm. really. Yeah, That's I, I mean, me. I mean, yeah. condemning people is also a slippery f slope, mm -hmm. right? You know, and and going down this path of, you know, not only does this allow us to increase taxes on it, you know, but we get to, you know, censor that speech and and take down those podcasts, right? I also, uh, on the side of tobacco, that I've always stated, I disagree with the policies in most platforms that are poo poo and tobacco. Tobacco is a legal, a legal pro regulated, but legal yep. on a federal level. It's legal. Yep. So is it just like your your views because it fits some narrative that someone created? We go along with it that I can't advertise on Facebook because it's tobacco and right. that and that's in their acceptable use policy. I think that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. It's a legal product. You should provide a platform that allows me to market it to certain people. You, Facebook knows. You, you, you trying to you trying to tell me hamburgers aren't killing people? Right, but Paul, <laughs> right. That's a but good Paul point. it goes it goes beyond Facebook. There are there are some some cigar shops that are trying to get online, and there's only a handful of merchant services that they could use for credit card processing. It's bullshit. It's total bullshit. But see, here's the problem. This is where I've said this on the show. You can go back episode after episode since January second of 2017. I've been on here. Here's the PCA's problem. Premium cigars needs its own category. Yes. That's the problem. That's what the yes. PCA mm -hmm. should be doing is saying you have cigarettes, their regulation. The problem is historically. Yeah, but that requires education in, to people to have an open mind to understand the differences between cigars and pipe. I put pipes in that, in that bucket. I mean, maybe there is a difference, but cigars and pipes, right? Cigarettes, vaping. Chewing tobacco, uh, own like category. They they need their own categories because they're a different is, health risk for each. Different health, exactly. It's science. It's mm -hmm. a different health risk for everything. And so when you start getting into that, then it allows for conjecture. Mm -hmm. Then you can you can have this. You start trying to base your arguments in science, and it loses people. Right. Because then you can just you can go to climate change. You can go to vaccines and COVID, and it's it in. You can spin data. And as we know in security, right, you can spin mm. shit all day long and, and make an argument to support your narrative. Right. Right. Yeah. I think it's bullshit. It, it is. And again, I'm always cautious about allowing for regulation to um, extend scope or right. get scope creep. Right. Because it's so much harder to pull it back. That's and the problem. I, it won't look, get pulled back. Controversial view. I, I like flavored cigars. There are certain flavored cigars I really like. Acid. I don't. I don't smoke them very often, right? Acid one. I like the uh, Java's good. The uh, Oliva. the subtle ones, right? Yeah, Oliva makes a nub. The nub. The, nub the cappuccino cafe. ones. Like espresso. The, the yeah, espresso, espresso is the one. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. They make a cappuccino espresso. They have a macchiato. Yeah. I, yeah. The I think it's the espresso one that I really like. Yeah, that's nice. With I was just looking that's at nice these. That's nice with actually coffee and like. Yeah, because you know, it kind of like it's not a yeah, it's not a thing. it's not like strawberry with right. your yeah, exactly. tobacco. Exactly. Right, it's coffee with your tobacco, which you know goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just looking at these like fire smoked cigars that they that oh, they the had Kentucky in there. I, I, the Kentucky yes, Kentucky yeah, the KFCs. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I I I hadn't seen those before. They go good with that, a bloody mary. I do yeah. have to say, yeah, with a bloody mary, I like a, a candela or the fire cured mm -hmm. something in that in that kind of. They had a half candela. One in there called yeah. Swamp Thing. Yeah, yes. Swamp Thing like, by Drew Estate. Yep. I was I was asking the owner here. I was like, "What the hell is this?" It's a Kentucky Fire Cured uh, binder and filler, and the it's obviously half Candela 
and then half yeah. the, the natural wrapper. They're actually pretty good. Yeah, those flavors it's go together. Salty, it's, it's eye catching. Earthy. It's definitely have it with a Bloody Mary. Yes. You will not be disappointed. Yeah. If your Bloody Mary has like that <laughs> Chipotle kind of seasoning in it too, like I feel like those flavors go yeah. really well together. <clears throat> well, we really deviated. We didn't though. I don't off, think we did because off, oh, off of no. regulation into well, no, what be, goes good with the Bloody Mary. Because but, the, yeah, the, it's like it's like when I fight, they're not they're not honing in. I agree with Jason like with the science thing and you get the science creep and everything. But it's like when we send a representative from the cigar industry and they actually get floor time with the government, all they're doing is doing the cliche thing. It's gonna cost jobs. It's gonna cost jobs. It's gonna. They should fight for their own category. It's that simple. We can call this whole section, but won't someone think of the children? Right. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh. it's, it's like the category of this argument, right? Yeah, like right. The, the whole, uh, you know, oh, think of the children, you know, and, it, and meanwhile. It, 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 because it, I don't know, you know how to be a parent. Because right? it fits, but it fits, right. the, but it fits <laughs> the narrative, right? Just like drugs were, like, we got to have a war on drugs. Mm -hmm. They declared a war on tobacco. Hey, how, how well did that work, by the way, the war on drugs? No, it would, that's a whole... How, how dude, well did that that's work? A whole, uh, so I, if you want to <laughs> dig into the drug thing, um, not only did I listen to the interview, but Dr. Carl, Carl Hart wrote a book called Drug Use for Grownups. Mm. And so don't just go listen to the interview. Like, actually listen or read the book. It's eye-opening. What's it called again, the book? Uh, drug Use for Grownups. Okay. Uh, so Dr. Hart spent a better part of like almost 30 years, like literally getting people high on a substance and studying it, <laughs> really? like studying the effects <laughs> of drugs on people. Yeah. Like I, I can't yeah. think of like, there's probably a pretty short list of people who have that level of experience yeah. on studying how like PhD scientists yep. Yep. studying how drugs affect people. Um, and it was, and again, you can't like just take one source and inform an opinion right you gotta source your, your data from multiple sources right. but i was like that's eye-opening to me because i like listening to folks that go against the narrative like really what goes into the mm -hmm. maybe the narrative isn't totally bad like look like kids shouldn't be like ripping down cigarettes and vape stuff like we, we all know that's bad and the answer is usually like somewhere in between as well yeah. like we're not saying tobacco is not bad for you at all right there is some risk we all work in cybersecurity. yep in some capacity, we understand risk risk very well. Mm -hmm. And again, even in cybersecurity, the risk is it's somewhere in between, right? right. There's no like binary zero or one, right? Uh, in a lot of these equations. Yeah, and, and and to Adrian's point, the same people who are complaining are stuffing chicken nuggets down their kids' throats, like yeah, so because that, it's that easy. You can go through a drive. That was the other comment. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, come on. That was the other comment. You want to think of the children? How about uh, free school lunches that aren't garbage? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Soda. Oh, sugar is. It's. I mean, come on. But that it's, was it's, a, it's a rabbit hole, and it's. But again, similar tobacco, right? This was another narrative. Mm -hmm. I when I grew up, uh, when I was in like elementary school age, and we would think about food. The narrative back then, fat was evil. Yep. Completely right? evil. <laughs> Butter, meat, eggs, all of that stuff was completely evil. So everything had to be either fish. Which, if you consume a lot of fish, you get mercury poisoning. Uh, and also, sushi, a lot of sushi is really high in cholesterol, right? But back then it was fish and uh, sugar-free. Uh, sorry, fat-free. Fat fat reduced fat, yeah. fat-free, but you, with, you'd they would supplement with sugar. You'd have these bags of gummy bears that would say mm -hmm. fat-free on them. They'd have this little circle on them that said yeah. fat-free. <laughs> Everything like, was fat-free. That's but insane, instead, right? Instead of fat, they were substituting with sugar. And that sugar is like the worst. Yeah, but then 10 years later, you got yeah. parents talking about, oh, I can't have anything with red dye number 12 or whatever the hell it was. Remember like that whole thing about the dyes and, yeah. the, and the... I know. I, they, I mean, they I try to stay away from the red dye. They but ban, I know, but that's, it's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, that's, but it's again, it, it's a narrative and the answer is usually somewhere in between. Right. It's not, you should never eat meat right. and it's not, you should well, never eat sugar either, right? Like it's, it's all, it's a balancing and, act. And the way. details are where some of those dyes, some of those food dyes come from. The, the traditional ones that they get rid of, it, it's not anything you would consider edible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about smoking in the wind. 
<laughs> yeah. It sounds kind of funny to say it's that. Like I don't know why. In the wind. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> why is it? There's an expression there, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> something about peeing in the well, wind. Well, golfing and fishing Generally, in Generally, it's April. something you're not supposed to do, right? <laughs> it all comes back to me, something like that, right? Um, and, and there's an article uh, from Holtz, um, which... I, I'm actually big, I'm a big fan of Holtz. I like Holtz. I think if, uh, you know we do a lot of shopping online and in local cigar retailers here at Stogie Geeks. Um, Holtz is a good site. I've ordered a lot from them. I really like them. Uh, and they, this is from their blog. And I just want to throw it out there: like you shouldn't smoke in the wind. Like if you're going to enjoy a nice cigar, like I I get it. Like sometimes you don't have a choice, yeah. and you obviously can't control the weather, but. Like smoking in the wind is not, is not, it's not fun, dude. No. It's not on a windy day. Uh, and I've had a lot of experiences, um, you know, early on, right as or just before starting Stoey Geeks, where I had not set up in my house or my office where I'm lucky today. I've got a designated spot in my house that's separate from my house where I can smoke. And if you ever want to hear the story, no, we can smoke here in, in the office. Don't tell anyone that. <laughs> like, <laughs> you find ways. But before that, you, I'm like, wherever we're going, like, is there an opportunity for me to smoke a cigar? Like, I'm on the beach. Yeah. And you at the uh, private beach club, you know, Bonnet Shores. Yep. You can smoke on the beach. Do you really want to smoke on the beach, though? One of the, one of the worst experiences of smoking a cigar I've had was on the beach in Block Island mm -hmm. with the wind whipping. It ruins Crosswinds. the experience. Yeah. Yeah. Ruins totally. it. Totally. On a boat. You'd be on a boat, and if you're whipping yep, through, and yep. the wind's whipping, I, it fun. ended up it ended up being me and my buddy hiding behind like some type of structure that they had there, with yep. the wind toward our backs. That's so we could strategy, and we, and we literally just sat there, yes, smoking a so cigar. That could save it every kind of every time. Yeah, it did. We, it did. So we used to go to the beach every year. We used to go to Top Sail in uh, North Carolina, Top Sail Island. And it was it was a tradition tradition every year. Me and my ex father in law would like go all around this house, you know that that we were renting, like looking for the spots. Yep, looking yep. for the spots where That's where, where you going. were sheltered from, because the, they they all had these wraparound porches. So usually mm -hmm. there was a spot you could go uh, where you weren't going to get hit by the wind, uh, and it was usually one spot. Like every other spot was, you know, just no good. So we, we rented this beach house uh, one year when my oldest was like a year old or so. Um, so over 10 years ago. And right around, I, I don't know if we were doing Stoey Geeks at that mm -hmm. time. Probably not. But before we started Stoey Geeks and huge in a cigar. So I'm renting this house. I'm working out of this house. Um, and it's on the beach. and But I can't smoke in the house. Mm -hmm. So I go out on the deck. Now the deck in this house faces the water. Dude, like eighty-five percent of the time, the wind is so strong on this deck coming off the water that it just ruins the experience. And the the best memory I have of smoking a cigar was wrapping up my week with my weekly meeting on a Friday. Mm -hmm. I went to the other side of the house. I got a beach chair and set it up like on the the walkway in the front of the house and had a cigar. And I'm like, oh, it's like a totally different experience. I even remember I was smoking a Baccarat, like nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is great cigar. Because I wasn't like in the wind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The wind also takes away from the palate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, especially if you have some crosswinds and whatnot, you know, really, you're really not getting the uh, nuances of, of what the cigar is trying to present. Yeah. Whatever it is, I just smoke it. Also, lighting in the wind is. is Intense. Yeah. Did you go through the tips though? The, the the tips on the website are a little comical. Yeah, like one is invest in a windproof lighter, right? <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> make sure you got a lot of butane because it's gonna it, even a butane lighter will blow out in in the wind, right? Butane butane torch will blow out in in the wind. Um, light up inside and then go out in the wind. You've been there, <laughs> been there. Yep, yep. My. Light up inside and don't go out in the wind. My only, <laughs> my only tip, my only tip, if you are gonna smoke in the wind, smoke a robusto or smaller. Mm. Yeah, because if you, if you're if you're if you're, if you're in Toro world, it's not gonna be fun. If you're in Churchill world, it's yeah. not gonna be fun. If the winds, really, so the wind was pretty still pretty strong because we had some uh, power out. I actually lost power for about 20, 30 minutes last night because the the winds were pretty strong here in, in Rhode Island, 
And when I got in this morning, it was still pretty windy. I forget what I lit up this morning. What I lit up this morning? Uh, it was a Mikarita, I believe, this morning that I, mm. I lit up on my way in. And I had the cigar in my mouth. And the wind was so strong that it was almost wanting to, like, blow the cigar out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's when you The know, winds were crazy. I, I got to get inside to finish my cigar because mm -hmm. this is not going to end well. <laughs> yeah. That covers smoking in the wind. So don't. Don't. <laughs> don't I mean, don't. Just don't, do just don't, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's... yeah you, you don't need a windproof lighter. You need a windproof area. Yeah. yeah. So. The smoke. Great point. <laughs> it. Great point. <laughs> it begs the question, though, so, like, where do you smoke in your house? What do you mean? I don't so smoke. So if you're outside, you're yeah, going yeah. to be in, the, like, uh, yeah. heat, cold. Yeah. Hu smoking in humidity, actually, is not. It's kind of similar. Mm -hmm. I mean, scientifically not the same, but similar in almost ruining the experience. If it's too humid outside, yeah, uh, it affects my experience with cigar and I think even flavor too. Yep. Certainly the way it burns in even if it's you know eighty degrees out, but the humidity is off the charts. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it, think it, of all the places they roll these things; they're super humid, yeah, super warm places, right? I mean, that might help them in the in the rolling process, mm. certainly, but. <laughs> <laughs> Samantha put on our Slack, our, our director of operations. Uh, there's an Amazon link to a one person shelter thing you put in the beach. <laughs> yes. So here's the funny thing it's on, on bucks. social media. If you see people who are, are like, they're, they're trying they're trying their best to smoke like outside in the winter in New England. Or I've colders. set up a tent on my deck. A hunting tent. Yes. So many people I see are using hunting tents. They'll yes. put it out on their deck, they'll just sit in it, they'll put a little, a little heater in there and go to town. Still cold. Still cold. Still cold. Still cold. Just I've, yeah. I've been there with yeah. the space heater in in the tent on the deck. I've been there. Dude. So uh, I, I I have a nice big. It's it's like a mini, it's like a it's tent. like a mini barn, right? Yes. So it's it's yeah. it's a massive two story shed. Yes, right? it's a mini barn. That's I, the place to do. I'll it. go in and I'll do that. I'll crack the door and do yep. the thing. You know, got what a, mean? a wood stove in there. Or whatever works good. Whatever it's, kind yeah, of heating yeah. system you have. That's it. Yeah, it has to be a shed. Tent, I think tents can work, <laughs> uh -huh. but they got to be pretty heavy duty. Uh, the style tents because again yeah. wind you know in the That's winter it. kind of thing is, is yeah and is i mean luck, luckily for me i have a nice wrap around porch i can usually find where it's not windy mm -hmm. and if not i'll go to the back of the house on the deck in the back <sighs> right i'll find the spot but in extreme circumstances dude yeah. i am it i am in that i'm in my barn <laughs> yeah it's almost always the, it, it, it's it's going to be that inland side yeah that you want to that yeah. you want to find i yep. mean having a separate structure from your home is the most ideal yes i think coming off of that you know maybe a, a, a good quality tent i didn't have the best tent you know when i did it um but then after that i think it's having a structure over you yep so if it's raining yep. a, a great experience is just when it's pouring rain just sit outside and have a cigar it's awesome it is yeah. it is mm -hmm. in, in but also protect you from the sun as well so you're not baking out in you, the know, sun. you know what actually it happened this winter it was cold enough for snow to be coming down, but it wasn't like frigid cold outside. Yes. Sitting on my wraparound porch in a rocking chair, watching the snow just start to come down, mm. smoking a nice stogie was awesome. Now, the a garage, nice the garage is kind of like that in-between space that's yeah. kind of separate from the house, but still attached to the house. And I can tell you... 90 plus percent of the time your significant other is going to complain because the yes, house is I was just going to say that I was when you smoke that. in the garage I haven't gone there yet but a strategy <laughs> for staying warm yeah uh, in the garage is an electric blanket oh, so you okay. met you okay. met Stogie Santa yeah ask him next time you see him about ask electric him about blanket electric blanket All right. dude All right, there was some will. nights where he, was, he said he had the bottle of scotch and a cigar and an electric blanket no and way. he fell asleep oh because <laughs> it's so warm and cozy and i've got my scotch and you're sitting in there in your garage with the door open oh my god and you fell asleep i have him on a text string right now i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to find a picture of somebody sleeping with a blanket over <laughs> oh dude wake that's... up and there's a drift of snow on you i think that's what he said he said it was snowing no way I think, adrian i think you uh kind of jogged my memory i think he said it was a snowstorm and there was like snow dude. blowing in on him I'm gonna have but to, he had the electric blanket. I'm gonna have to send it and say, "I heard you mastered." That's great. <laughs> dedication, man. It's dedication. That's awesome. I love it. Oh boy. Uh, you had a couple more stories. Uh, Pravada Cigar Club launches the Subterraneo. Yes. This this is, is actually awesome. So 
So it looks like Power Rangers, dude. It, it's listen. This is this is such a cool community builder thing. And and, and Joe and I were talking about Joe Hollywood and I were talking about it before the show. <laughs> <laughs> the bring revival. it back. I got you. I got revival. you. I got you, brother. Um, <laughs> Just bringing the community together, right? So, so ultimately, what this is is it's a group of, so so Brian Descend, which is he he runs Pravada. I've been a member of Pravada since 2020 at this point, and it's it's a community building activity. He got AJ Fernandez to come in and do some custom blends, build 12 cigars, limited, right? And it became it's becoming a scavenger hunt is basically what it is. So some of the cigars will be released in your monthly subscription. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them are going to be released to LCA shops, but regional, and it creates a scenario where you have to trade now. So I may not be able to get one of these cigars Mm -hmm. because it got dropped in, let's say an LCA shop in or LCA shops in Texas. Hmm. We have a, we have a discord Mm -hmm. team going on right now. Discord channels going on right now where we can actually start trading now. So if I can get some in my area and I collect like let's say five, mm-hmm. now I can go to someone who got the drop that was in Texas and I can be like, dude, I'll ship you one if you ship me one. Hmm. And the goal is to get the collection of all 12. Wow. And it's, it's building such a cool community. That and is that, really cool. And that's, and that's what I'm, you know, that's the, and we were talking about this earlier, that's the future of yeah. our industry yeah. is the community, right? And this is why it pisses me off about the whole PCA thing. Let's bring us all together. Right, and let's do things like this. I've met people and talked to people that I would have never talked to. I've learned more about different types of cigars just by the community involvement, and that this, you know, this Pravada community and family is building in the industry, and I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. The con- I love it that since Jason has come to the show, he's got what I've called for years, even pre Stogie Geeks, the Stick Chaser bug mm. <laughs> right yes. I and do. just so I you do. know i'm I waiting do. for Pravada to get a little bit bigger because i own the url stickchases.com nice and i'm gonna nice. sell it to them <laughs> nice you know you know what though it, it's 100 true and and you know we were talking earlier about of course we want to support the local brick and mortar shops we want to 100 but i think the future of the brick and mortar shops is now about the experience Right, mm-hmm. it's about the experience of going to the brick and mortar shop and and enjoying your time together in the community. You know, I I, I love every- mail, dude. I love mail call. I love it because I'm excited about it. I'm excited for waiting for it to come. And I order from brick and mortar shops. I order from you know folks that 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 Joe knows, right? And I'll order it, but I'm waiting for it. You know, and it's it's just that I don't know. It, it gets me excited. It gets me excited to go to the mailbox and be like, oh man, I got it. He's got the bug, Paul. I do. He's he's got the bug. I guess me. I don't know about you guys, but every cigar shop here is is a club now. Yeah, you know, is is basically like like a community now. Yeah, the future is what Jason's talking (laughs) about. Like that whole club experience. Experience. It's soup to nuts experience. Part of that was a legal change here when when they allowed grocery stores to start carrying alcohol. They changed the laws where yes. you know now tobacco shops could sell. You know, it's it's the reason I was able to you know to pick this up here. You know, like like they couldn't even uh, a liquor store couldn't even sell a mixer or you know sodas or anything like that. You know, you'd have to get your alcohol one place, and get, if you wanted any mixes or anything else, you'd have to go somewhere else. And same thing for the tobacco stores; but they, they could they only can't, sell tobacco. But they can't now. Now I'm going to get on the rant. We're on the previously but they can they deliver tobacco in your state i i don't know that's a good question um not that i'm aware of uh I, liquor what, yes what i think I is get messed liquor up. delivered so, yeah. so maybe what i think is messed up though is that and i i don't think this exi- i don't think you can get tobacco delivered in Brown. no we talked about this last we, show we, we can't can. you can't okay. there's that whole shop ri right and so in, in, in liquor in ri sam, or liquor okay. ri yep. and and sam actually put it in the in oh, in the okay. chat last time yeah. that you can I just remember to be fair, but they were like, wicked expensive they, they had limited selection sure and wicked expensive. sure that's fine but like i think if you can deliver liquor and deliver marijuana you should be able to deliver mm-hmm. tobacco Right, I mean, yeah. a lot of states where marijuana is legalized, you get the delivery. You just go on the app and you get yeah. it delivered. It should be across the board to all these things that are legal but regulated mm-hmm. in four people over a certain, you know, over yeah, twenty-one yeah. or whatever, or over eighteen for tobacco. Right. Right, right. Actually, in Rhode Island, it's twenty-one for tobacco. 
Which, yeah, yeah, change here. Which too. I think is insane because if I can, you know, if I can, if I can put, if I can put my hand up and in, in, you know, and swear that I'm going to go take a bullet for this country, I should be able to smoke a cigar. No question. Right. I'm sorry, but that's just. Yeah. It's... <laughs> by the way, like we have this whole cigars for troops movement. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, that's been, I, I mean, right. you know, like, you know exactly, I, I, exactly. I don't want to put the hot posh on on a nonprofit, but like, come yeah, on, yeah, like I, you know. Right, it's crazy. One hundred percent agreed. But, but no, I think you know the the, the whole Subterraneo line. I think it's it's just awesome from a community building perspective, and getting people talking to each other and and building relationships with each other. And you know, it's it's ultimately just a cigar manhunt is what it boils down to. But it's in its own right a genius way to build a community. And there's going to be seventy five hundred of each one of these twelve, right? Mm -hmm. That that are going to be released, and and now it's up to you to build the collection, mm. right? And, the, and my goal is when you build the collection, I'm gonna start smoking them all, right? But right. but it's the hunt, right? Like like Joe said, I'm I'm addicted to the hunt. Right? Loves I, it. I stick love chaser. It. I love He's it. He's a stick chaser. He love loves it. it. Like he loves I it. really really do. And I mean, you guys see some of my posts, right? Yeah. You see some of my posts, like <laughs> mail call. Look what I got now. Jason like, hit me it. up in I between Stogie Geeks episode for a box. <laughs> Right, this is a true story, right? I did I he's like did. he takes a picture of this box? He's like, dude, does your guy have this box? And I'm like, all right. So I say to the guy, I'm like, hey, do you have the box? He goes, no. Pavada ships it in bundles. I'm like, do you have the box? He goes, no, they're in bundles. And Jason's like, no, I'm there's this whole you. presentation <laughs> box. And yeah, like, yeah. because they're members of this LCA, mm -hmm. they don't put the box out on the presentation shelf because most of them are really sold before they even get the next month's order. Mm -hmm. So the, the, they're pre-ordering stuff. Yeah. And what I like about Brian from the Pavada Club is he's a disruptor in the industry. Yeah. Mm. You know me, Paul, you've been working with me since 2017. I am like, wave the flags for all disruptors because yep. disruptors start progress. Yes. Mm -hmm. And disruptors start conversation, which needs to be had within the industry and at the same time they're educating yeah, yeah. i love that oh like he, he, i am getting so educated just being in the community do you I have the baseball it. cards from Pavana? i do okay i say, do I if do. you want them i remember i got I them do. and i'm like what the heck am i gonna do with these things like I, you know you know what it was there was this, there was this deal it, a brick and mortar but not in this state mm -hmm. and there was this deal if i bought enough cigars they put it in there as part of the package and you know me i love mail call so of course i'm gonna top off the cigar <laughs> the cigar order and i got it come i got it with it it was awesome Jason's what are we, in what easy are we smoking sell. next? I didn't. I didn't. Awesome. <laughs> if you want so the brick I, and mortar, make sure you email Jason. At yes. And he yes. Will buy I, go I, will, I will spread the wealth. <laughs> I need to go grab some more cigars. Hang on. I will spread the wealth. No right. doubt about it. But Email me at Joe H at StoryGeeks.com. I'll give you Jason's email if you want to make you, money. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yes. I, you yeah, know, but, it's funny. I, I put a post up the other day and I said, uh, I said my cigar orders are getting close to my wife's Amazon orders, mm -hmm. the deliveries. Mm -hmm. I said, as long as I can stay under that threshold, I'll be under the radar. <laughs> Adrian, I will still fly under the, the radar. <laughs> like, he's got the bug. And, and like, <laughs> like, like, I've never had the bug. Like, like, even when you guys are talking about, like, smoking outdoors and whatnot, like, I have the keys to, like, three local cigar yeah, shops. Yeah. So I've always, like... But you have if, the bug on a different level. But, but, but I'm just, like, I'm just, like... And, and, like, I've never chased because I do have the luxury where people, like, try this, try this. Like, this thing I'm smoking now yeah. is, is awesome. You know what I mean? But, like, I didn't have to go out and seek it. They're just, like, hey, there you go, and, yep. and whatnot. And, and I just think it's, it's great because... Jason like was like chasing this box, <laughs> and the funny thing, is, and, and, and the thing is like the owner's like just yeah, here's the box, like like he's just like, 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 like just take it, box, oh, take it. right? Like yeah, you're oh yeah, about, like Adrian, thanks, it's, it's it's an empty box. Jason was. Well, there's really cool boxes though. I yeah, love. That. I, I mean, that's part of it. It's right? not even a cool box. It is. I it's like not that, like man. a Maximus box. Oh, no, or no, like no, no, or no, like but... you know. Or, or a real cool box like like I'll throw the Fuente box or, or I, it's just a box and he's chasing boxes, man. dude. I like it, man. I'm sorry, you empty know, it's, boxes. It's gonna look really good in my mind. I, I, I like boxes too. <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 sorry. I'm sorry, Joe. Uh, I what? I like the boxes too. I'm, I'm oh, I love the boxes. <laughs> I'm, I'm I love right. the I, art. I, I good, throw. I, I give I love, away or throw away all yeah, my boxes. I, I love the boxes. I love the art. I mean, Paul. <laughs> I remember, like Paul. I use them for stuff. Paul had uh, he had bought a box of like the Davidoff art series. Oh yeah. And like people were, like, can I have the top lid of the box and whatever? And Paul's like, yeah, here you go, knock yourself out. <laughs> like freaking, you know what I mean? Because I, I don't know. I, just I don't have room to store box <laughs> I mean, empty boxes. So Paul. Yeah, I know. My, 
my my skinny monster is done, and yeah. I've moved on to one one of my old favorites because I noticed they had them. Rocky uh, Patel, vintage. Yeah, Rocky yeah. Patel, vintage, nineteen ninety box press. Nice. One of my favorites. That's just as good video. as I remember. It just gave Jason a Opus X love affair. See, mm. see what he thinks of that one. I had a few of those kicking around in my humidor. Nice. nice. What did you guys think of the Culebra? Uh, towards the end, it kicked into mm -hmm. what it was supposed to be. Yeah. And it was leathery, white pepper. Uh, it's the Tuahe classic. Love it. It was awesome. So here's a question for you. Yes. Um, how much do you think it being in the humidor would have um, would have given it? Because I got a, almost like a cedary taste. Okay. Middle middle third, mm. like a cedary a taste. Do you think cedar, you think yeah. it's from being in the humidor, or do you think it's actually the blend? I think it's the blend because it was in the tin foil, mm. so it wasn't right. necessarily right. in That's direct right. contact with the the cedar in the coffin. Yeah. Plus, it, it was right. in a right. sealed coffin too. Right. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, I did get like it, I got a little bit of a cedar taste. Yeah, a lot of people say remove the cedar sleeve because it'll absorb too much of the cedar flavor and mm. interfere. You know, if it has a cedar sleeve yeah, on it, yeah, this yeah. was in a cedar coffin, but, uh, but in the foil. In the foil, yeah, yeah. It was good. Flavor was great. Hey, what's this Cuban cigar book? This thing looks awesome. I want one. Yeah, so I mean, I you know I put that out there just because you know I've been obviously over time I've hit you up, Paul, about mm. learning more about the Cuban Cuban cigar lines and oh, I, I saw know, that book. Yeah. You know, and it's, 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 I thought it was an interesting article um, about, you know, a book that literally can go, you know, I mean, someone who's focused on the Cuban cigar lines and, and literally a book about every single Cuban cigar that you can get. And, I, you know, you and I have talked about, hey, where can I, where can I order some? And, you know, how can I? Yeah. It, it, it's, for me, it's like, wow, if I could get this book to learn more about the Cuban cigar lines, I would love it. You know, there's some that say that, like, all Cuban cigars pretty much taste the same and are the same. And, you know, there are all the people that say, well, like, all Cuban cigars are worthless, like, don't bother. Mm. Again, I think the answer is somewhere in between. In I don't think there's as much of a degree of difference between Cuban cigars. I think there's a, a few stages, right? Like, there's the ultra premiums, it's kind of the middle road, and then there's, like, the lower end. Not too much difference between them. There's de definitely a difference, right? But if you're just getting started, you want to spend a lot of money, mm. you can get... Um, what they call Cuban sandwiches, right? Short filler, Cuban cigars, pretty cheap. And I tell you what, like flavor profile wise, I'd put that up against like the next tier kind of in the middle road where most of them fall. Yep. There are differences between them and they're subtle. And then there's like the Bahikes and some other ones that are, you know, that kind of top echelon. Yep. That's where I would categorize them. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, like I said, it's you know it's it's someone who had a well known it's CubanCigarWebsite dot com Alexander Groom mm -hmm. who's been doing a lot of um, you know just listing out the details of every cigar. He turned it into print, right? So he, he turned all it's of that cool. knowledge. It's cool that, book. Yeah, yeah, totally. So for me, it's like I, I think I might go out and buy the book number one and, and and learn a little bit. It's not reviews. That's what I liked about this. Yeah, it's, it's not a, it's not a review the, book. It's right. telling you I love history, right? I love I love learning about how cigars are made. So I think this here is going to be, an, it's educational versus a review mm -hmm. and an opinion. That's what I loved about this article. And hopefully the book when I order it. <laughs> you know what would be super cool? A uh, gentleman you had on PSW, Bill mm -hmm. DeLisi. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a, uh, we did a Story Geeks um, episode with him about Cuban scars. He seems to be pretty knowledgeable in that mm -hmm. area. We should flash him an email, see if he's heard about this book. And then if he has or hasn't, see if we can do like a future episode. Because it'd be good to get his take mm -hmm. on that too. Like I, I thought he was pretty knowledgeable. And what I, what, what I like about this book is, again, it's the historical process, right, mm -hmm. of, of that and the mystique. And you get a little bit more of insider into a mystique era. Yeah. That's not going to change within our lifetime. Like they will be in the bago with Cuba I, at least through our lifetime, for sure. I'm just a sucker for coffee table books, for mm -hmm. nice photography, for history, for yep, you know. But like that combination of things, like I'm I've been a book fan all all my life. You know, I grew up with a bunch of books, and uh, I, I've I've got a bunch of stuff like that. And mm. just it, it, the topic almost doesn't even matter to me. Like it, it's just <laughs> nice. Just a cool looking book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, Adrian, yeah. I want I want to ask you a question. Right, we're going to you first. You're our remote host, which can be challenging to pipe in as much as as you'd like. Right, being being remote. But I'm getting in there. 
So, yeah, you've done a great job on the show, by the way, uh, of, of balance. So, has, I'm going to do the technology example first. Since Steve Jobs obviously, you know, passed away, but also, you know, departed Apple, unfortunately, uh, in that, in, you know, down that path. Um, and folks like Gates and Balmer have departed Microsoft. Have those companies in the culture and the brand been the same since they left? No, in fact, within uh, six months of him being buried, you know, they did something that that he said. Like, there's this whole list of things that he said they would, would never, never do. do. He's mm. he was very principled. Like, mm. they had all this uh, data uh, from doing studies. You know, that the ideal size of the iPad was about ten inches. Yep. You know, and I I, I think the the standard iPad is like nine point seven inch screen, something like that. He said, no, doesn't make. Doesn't make sense uh, for a lot of reasons to do a smaller one. We're never doing a smaller one. They announced an iPad Mini. Like, yep. I, I don't think he was in the ground for for a year before they were, they're like, well, <laughs> that opportunity mm. is now available to us. So mm. no, no, I, I I don't think you can because he was one of those leaders. And I've seen companies. You can have a company with a uh, thousand people, ten thousand people, hundred thousand people. And uh, you just can't discount the impact that like a visionary leader can have. Mm -hmm. and, and you see those companies change uh, quite a bit. In, in some cases, it's for the better. Mm -hmm. You know, some, sometimes those folks are, you know, constraining what the company can do and, and holding it back from, you know, something even better. I mean, you can absolutely argue, you know, that um, – at least from a shareholder point of view, that Apple's better off now. Mm. You know, like I know AirPods alone, uh, somebody said uh, if you broke out AirPods as a separate company, it would be a Fortune 200 company. Wow. On its but, own. But isn't the <clears throat> the greatness of a true leader that you can step down and have your vision succeed to empower your employees to carry out your vision? But how long does the vision stay relevant? Yeah. Because here's the thing, yeah. right? Um, I, I look at I look at, Micro most, I look at Microsoft though. They have changed completely, dramatically, dramatically. and I I argue for the better. I do yeah, way better I, than the I, Balmer days. I think yep. what Satya Nadella did with Microsoft is mm -hmm. genius, mm -hmm. and, and, and and way ahead of the the, the curve, mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, just look at where M365 is now as a platform mm -hmm. and Azure is as a platform focusing on not being propri proprietary, but more integrated. Yeah, they change. I mean, they did a big 180. time, yeah. big time. And it's for the better, right? Focusing on security. Holy sh I mean, the joke back in the day was security, Microsoft. Yeah, bullshit, right? Yeah, Gates had something to do with the, the security aspect of it, I too. I get it, but, but it's launched yeah. incredibly mm -hmm. since Satya Nadella has taken over, uh, honestly, at least from what I've seen focus so right? i guess the key is finding someone to be your successor finding somebody that, who can that, launch it to the next level right 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 and that's, that's well, the whole it, thing and G gates gates was really good about letting smart people go off and do stuff you know like uh xbox was mm -hmm. firmly back in the gates era yeah. and um man was that a moonshot you mm -hmm. know and it, we've seen other companies try and do similar things you know like uh mobile phones you know, I, I don't. I don't think people appreciate how hard a market that is to break into. Microsoft tried several mm -hmm. times. Yeah. Uh, right. You know, bought bought Nokia to do it, spun them back out. Yeah. Um, Amazon did the Fire Phone, and and you know, foot gunned themselves before it even came out by saying, you know what, we're going to have our own app store, and you know, we're going to. And, and the only thing that really made it there were the tablets. You know, because the tablets you can right. do without the Google apps and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But when they came out with the Fire Phone, like like the OS was good, like it it really felt and looked like their own thing. Uh, but they took out all the killer apps, which unfortunately were were mostly Google, and mm -hmm. they didn't really have a good answer for that on their own platform. So they they killed it right out of the gate, I think by by you know the, this competitive BS where, and, and this was really irritating in in the early days of uh, streaming devices, you know like like the Apple device, you know you can't watch Amazon Prime stuff on it, and on the Amazon uh, yeah, yeah. device you can't watch you know Apple. It, it was so stupid. I'm just wondering uh, how this translates. Into, it just hurts the consumer. And how does this translate into cigars? When we look at Davidoff, <laughs> mm -hmm. who. Not only obviously owns the Davidoff brand, but the Avo brand, yep. Camacho, uh, and, and many others. And 
you look at some of the iconic master blenders, Avo <laughs> Vagian, right? Hank Kellner. You know, uh, obviously Avo passed away. God rest his skull, soul. And you know what? Well, how, how do they continue? And we're going to see this more in the cigar industry yeah, totally. as the old guard, you know, either retires or no one lives mm -hmm. forever, right? And so, how do you keep that spirit going in all the things they created? So I think coming back to that Apple model um, is is a good one because you can both say. Steve Jobs w was right, like this was the right form factor, mm -hmm. but they didn't lose it. It's still there. Yeah. Because I hear people all the time just rave about how they love their iPad minis. Like it's the mm -hmm. perfect size. They use it every day. They love it. Uh, clearly, there was a market for that. Uh, and, and they really enjoy those devices and they make a bunch of money from them. So I, th I think um, you have to kind of preserve both. But you, as a company, you have to recognize. You're going to have the purest customer. Yep. And then you have people who aren't, you know. Oh, but, wow. Does that play into Star Wars? George Lucas is <laughs> yeah. another example of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that, right? that's a, that's another great example. Mm -hmm. But you can do both. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's fine. I, think so, that's, I think that's what where Star Wars is with Disney, right, is maybe not so much preserving the old is where it kind of falls down because there was the 1990s re-release. But yeah. You know, I think you're right, Adrian, preserving some of the old and doing the new, but I think you also need some of the marketing uh, in there to allow people to come over to those new ideas and some of the marketing to also preserve some of your older, right? I can see this did, in did cigars just, going like, hey, we're never... Did we just come full circle, though, with PCA? I mean, think about this. We, we, need to, we need to be engaging the new community in the mm -hmm. cigar industry. And I just got off my diatribe about how being part of Pravada has extended my so what you're knowledge. Saying is and, Davidoff and, needs to come up with a cotton candy cigar. No, what I'm <laughs> what I'm saying is is they need to know their audience. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. Know your well, know your market. Know your market. Yeah. Know your consumers, and know that not everyone is built in the same model, mm -hmm. in the same framework, and be able to work with that right yeah. and engage folks on all different levels. That's the key. Mm -hmm. You, we're you the know consumers. What the cigar industry we're the needs? ones buying the product. Know us. Right. Know, you know what, what we're the looking cigar for. industry needs? Paul? A Star Wars cigar? NFT, NFTs. NFTs, right. An <laughs> NFT cigar. No, I'm joking. I'm if that, but it's if probably that box happen. that Joe got me gonna was happen. an NFT, I would have bought it. <laughs> <laughs> there, I mean, there is an aspect of branding. Yeah, certainly. Do uh, you think... <laughs> it's it's going to happen. Do you, like, when I think... Do you think... A two-part question. For the retailers, there are certain hurdles that the retailers have to go through in order to display Davidoff in their retail shops. Mm -hmm. Do you think now that that's going to change and it's going to be in its own separate case still, the Davidoff? Oh, and then my second know. question See, is, is Davidoff, what I love about Davidoff, take out the product. The concept of Davidoff is they sell you the experience. Yes. They, they sell you the true cigar experience. I don't think that's going to change. I think Hanky, Avo, or in my assessment, and those closer to you know the industry and these folks, you, you, you may say I'm wrong, and that's fine. I'm more than happy to hear your opinion on that in, in, in facts as well. But I think that Hanky and Avo were on the blending side the, they're the technical people right mm -hmm. we talked about mr robot you mentioned mr robot right mm -hmm. they're that technical resource the technical advisors to that show there's a whole separate set of people in my opinion you know at, at davidoff that are about what joe you're talking about about that experience about the marketing about mm -hmm. the branding i hate the term lifestyle brand i think it's it's bullshit right but i think there's a a certain aspect to their brand that Breaches that that class and that experience, right? Mm -hmm. I hate to call it lifestyle because I think that's doing it a disservice. I think there is a, a a kind of classiness and an experience that they've they've built. I don't believe they're going to lose sight of that, right? I think where they might it might be interesting is how those more technical aspects, going from seed to cigar, mm -hmm. in in producing the things that is one aspect to that experience. Uh, how are they going to keep going on that? And you hope that those true leaders and visionaries, 
in the technical aspects mm -hmm. have passed down that torch to other people right yeah. i think it's kind of an unfair analogy when we talk about jobs and gates and, and bomber they were somewhat removed from the more technical aspects and more about the brand and the experience and mm -hmm. the to use a business term right the go-to-market experience yeah. go to you market know, planning. you know Joe, Joe hit on something interesting there, though, because, you know, in, in, in markets where you have a product that's B2B to C, mm -hmm. in, in yeah. other words, the manufacturer is not selling directly to the consumer. They sell to a retailer. So in cars, you've got a car dealership. Uh, yep. In retail, shelf space is, is finite. It's limited. Yep. So like I've, I've, I've heard, like, if you want to come out with a new drink or something like that, like there's a fee you've got to pay some of these big grocery store chains to to get some shelf space for your product, you know, so you, you got to sink in like a, a huge investment there. And when, you know, like the apples, the Davidoffs, you know, are already eating such a big chunk of that, it, it can be tough to find some, some shelf space. I, I don't know if it's the same in the cigar industry where you have to, you know, cause you know, those are mostly smaller shops, you know, you, you don't quite have like the, the Kroger Publix target kind of situation, but yeah, um, on, online you do, I think. <clears throat> Where shelf space yeah. isn't as much mm -hmm. of an issue. Yeah. So I think as a, your strategy right. as a newer brand is to go to that direct-to-consumer mm -hmm. or get online partnerships where it's warehouse space, not necessarily shelf space. Right. It's a sure. little sure. easier, right? But I think you got to build to the point where you do take up that shelf space. When you walk into the retailer and your brand is there, it's a long road to get there. Yeah. Well, Davidoff, unless you're like grandfathered in, like, you know, if Paul and I open up a cigar shop in Rhode Island tomorrow and we want to feature uh, Davidoff. I like, think it's like a $100,000 buy-in. It's, it's, it's a, it? a, a yeah. $65,000 buy-in okay. Okay, plus, so it is there. plus humidor, and it has to be displayed in its own separate humidor. Yes. So yes. with, usually it's lock and key. I don't know if wow. the lock and key is really in there. No, it like, is. But, it it but, is lock and but, key but in like, all shops because, I've ever been in. Because there's an experience where, like, the Davidoff company wants the presentation of somebody's got to come open it somebody's got to come and, yes. and, and yes. there's a whole oh, i gotta go get the key for you like, they, i want to hold the yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, and 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 i work once a month in a, in a cigar shop in in newport rhode island and there's a whole experience that i go through like with my training so i know it's true right where it's like i get the key and like I, it's only a the key. Wait, it's you put on, on a, the Mozart. It's you on put a on separate the gloves. thing, and it's like I almost want like the trumpets to come down. Like, you know? <laughs> yes. But then when you I hand it to the, the customer, when I hand it to the customer, and they're like, you know, they ask me the same thing that Stogie Geeks emailed me for years. Like, is it really worth it? And I'm like, well, it's an experience. Like, it truly is an experience. And then when they have it, they're like, wow, like you're you're right. And do you tell them like, hey, when you cut your lawn, do you like that smell? Yeah, like, right, because you will get <laughs> like, like, like the, and, and and what I like about Davidoff is not only they sell you the experience, but their product backs it up. Yeah, like, and the, like, I mean that's an overgeneralization. Like, it, I think a lot of Davidoffs do have that kind of grassiness, hay kind of profile mm -hmm. to them, and it's interesting how they could tune their marketing because, like, when I I sometimes I talk to people and they're like, oh, I hate all Davidoffs. I can't stand that flavor profile. It mm -hmm. it's like I'm smoking the grass clippings that, or the hay right and that's not all and their cigars fine. i'm they, like we well, try this one you. from davidoff yeah, right. that's where you rely on the retailers to find the right cigar for the right person mm -hmm. but it's okay to have a niche yeah. you know in fact uh, i'm i'm a, a ta in a class right now a, a product strategy class with uh with section four and and we talk about this this kind of stuff we go through case studies you guys all have like side for, hustles i did <laughs> not know about <laughs> hold on. jason what's your side hustle now you got to disclose one of your side hustles. you don't have one you're you got a new job not that long ago security it, weekly it, it, yeah. This is it right here, man. Yeah, stick chasing. That's stick chasing is his side hustle. hustle. You know? I'm going to contact uh, so like every retailer in the state and make a lot of money off of Jason. Go. Hey, it's right. all good, man. So you, it's all good. Do you guys know the, the story about how Lamborghini came about? No. Somebody so, wanted to get somewhere faster? <laughs> so Lamborghini, yeah, the, the guy's name, you know, he, he bought a Ferrari and he kept going through clutches. And he was like, it, it, this thing is garbage. So, he, you know, he tries to talk to Enzo Ferrari and tries to tries to tell him, hey, because he had a, a, a tractor company and Lamborghini is still a tractor company. You know, it's a separate company, but, uh, you know, they, they started out making tractors and he ended up putting 
tractor clutches in there because these Ferrari ones kept burning out. Mm. And, um, and, you know, basically, you know, Enzo, <laughs> Enzo basically told him, Hey, shut the, you know, F up, you know, I build the cars, you know, you, you know, you, you buy them. And, um, it just irritated him and, uh, he, he wanted what he wanted. So he started a company where, and, and that's always been a Lamborghini thing where, you know, you could come up with crazy custom stuff, uh, you wanted, they would build it for you. Whereas on, on the Ferrari side, it was very exclusive. Like anybody can go buy a Lamborghini, but even to this day, there's this culture around Ferrari where like, if you want one of the special edition ones, uh, you can't buy it if you don't already own two or three other Ferraris. Like, like you already, you, you have to like mm. buy it, it, And again, it's like that Davidoff experience right. where like, they're trying to maintain this, this feeling of exclusivity. And even like, uh, yeah, I think it was, well, um, and Fuente is a good example there too. Like as a <coughs> retailer, there's a certain level of exclusivity. Mm. I also feel like as a consumer, there's a certain relationship and exclusivity you have to have with a retailer that would sell you some of the more exclusive yeah. uh, Fuente releases, Adrian. Yeah. Th there was a music artist that actually wrapped his his Ferrari um, and like replaced the Ferrari logo with like this custom logo he made. I I'm blanking on who it was. It, it wasn't Daft Punk, but it was it was somebody like on the electronic side of things, and and they sued him, you know, for for basically selling their 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 brand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so like on the Lamborghini side, that that's why you'll see like the most extravagant, crazy Lamborghinis, and Lamborghinis cool with it because that's part of their brand. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, th this should be a Lamborghini should look like it just drove right off a poster in a kid's bedroom. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas whereas Ferrari, you know, no, it's got to have the old leather. You can only get it in these three colors. Like, you're gonna take it the way we give it to you, and and you're not allowed to do crazy things with it. It's the Apple model. Uh, I, uh, unless you're the Sultan of Brunei, then then you get whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> <laughs> literally, literally, Ferrari has made like five, like tons of one-offs for the Sultan of Brunei. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, there's a, bar a market for both sides. Yes, mm -hmm. that's it. They're knowing, yeah, they know they know the audience the they want to target, mm -hmm. and they're a, a building okay. off of that. They're building off of that market, right? Niches are okay. To each their own. Oh, we're talking about. Really expensive stuff, right? Because this, you know, price hikes are hitting the cigar industry. Is an article that I I saw recently from Cigar Aficionado, and I think we've all been predicting this for quite some time. And it doesn't matter the so they they show the Fuentes Rare Pink series. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that, cigar? Jason? You're in the chasing thing. Yeah, I have. Have I, you had? I haven't have, pulled the trigger yet. Have you seen the Rare Pink? I have. I, I heard have, it's not that I've, great. Yeah, I've, I've yeah I've heard mixed reviews as well. Yeah, to be honest with you. But it's just the. Is that like the pappy of uh, cigars? Yeah, the it's like that. Uh, Fuente, I think, probably has the most cigars, I'd say air quotes on the market, yeah. that are highly rare and highly sought after. I think they probably take mm -hmm. the cake in the number of things that they... Yeah, yeah. Uh, even the cigar you're smoking right now, Jason, yep. is not easy to find at all. I was lucky well, thank to, you. to thank find Thank you for some. sharing it with me. I said, lucky I bought a box, which is why I could share one with you. <laughs> but again, I just, I happened, like, literally, I was standing in a shop where I knew the person very well and um, knew her brothers and her family. Mm. And my wife knows her family. Yeah. And, and I was standing there when they were delivered Fuente cigars and they had a box of those. And I was like, can I can I buy the, the whole? You got can the I buy the whole up. like the whole yeah. box? Because I've been like, and not only did I have to have those relationships, I had to kind of show like mm -hmm. I've been looking for this cigar mm. right. for so long, and I've gone on the forums and people yep. laughed yep. at me about getting this cigar. And you had to convince them to sell it to you. Yes, yeah. and I did, and I, I bought a box, and that was ten plus years ago, right? And kind of <laughs> you know holding on to smoking every every once in a while uh, to kind of do that. There have been other the cigar. Family charitable foundation boxes, uh, where I got a couple more of those. Mm. It, it's one of my favorite uh, Opus X's to smoke. Yeah, so, uh, but very limited. Yeah, and you said ten years. Yeah, Whew. I I don't know which. What did the band look like on that one? That might have been one of the regular ones, and not. Yeah, that was from the box that I bought. Mm -hmm. Then how was it smoking? Is it good? Good. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, probably age a little wrapper issue, a little bit. Yeah, just from ten. I, you talked about hitting the pinnacle, right? Right. Of a cigar, it's. 
probably you should probably, probably start smoking I probably them should have smoked them. Yeah. <laughs> you should like probably I said, start I, smoking them. I didn't want to smoke that box again. You know, we go back to wine and other right, things. Right, like right. you, you kind of have these things as like a collector mm -hmm. and not experiencing them the way you probably should be, should be like you right, probably right. should be getting that box and smoking it yeah. uh, three years age maybe on opus or whatever and smoking the whole thing right i was like i want to be the person that has that yeah cigar and it holds a special place in my heart i don't yeah. want to smoke all in a of a decade them. i'm going to tell a story about yeah this. <laughs> and then but like the experience kind of wanes <laughs> off after that similar to wine and other yeah. and other yeah. kind of things mm -hmm. but even on these super rare things like the article from Cigar Aficionado says the rare pink series going up six percent in yeah. price. All tobacco is going up in price. How much is that is just inflation happening now though? Because everything is yeah. going up, right? Is it inflation sure. hitting? Is it just the cigar industry? I don't think it's just the cigar industry. Yeah, it's not, but it's also taxes on cigars. Oh, it's yeah, also yeah, the it, supply it, chain. Sure. There's a lot yep, of factors. Yep, I mean, yep. yeah. I, as soon as FDA started taking a vested interest. Mm -hmm. In cigars, you knew that any any taxes, any fees to the FDA, if we have to get FDA approval right. for tobacco, the consumer is going to going to mm. absorb those costs. And seven you know, percent was supposedly the inflation for last year, right? And yeah. I tell you what, I mean, you know, sell a couple of companies and you cash out some stock. I'm like. I took some of that, some of those proceeds, and I was like, "I'm buying cigars because I know <laughs> that price is only gonna go up." Mm -hmm. And there are cigars that will last ten years in my humidor yeah. that I want in my humidor, and I did. I bought, I, I put an investment in it. Right, something I like to do. I love mm -hmm. cigars. You, you got to put that in. So, but that's not just an investment in the cigars. Got to invest in the storage in those That's cigars it. as well. Right. You gotta now you're gonna the, have to take care of that. Gotta investment. have the cabinet. You gotta take care of it. But that cabinet is a cost. And that's why my cigar chasing got me a new humidor. Yes. <laughs> right. I mean, at the end of the day, I gotta take yep. care of it. I but prices I, are going up. It's only gonna go up. It's and, not. They're not. Cigars are not gonna get cheaper. No. But it, you're right. It's the care and feeding afterwards, right? And every single day, my phone tells me exactly where, where all four of my humidors are. And I, yep. you know, and I get pinged if they're not in the right spot. Yeah, there and is I gotta a go take care of it. I gotta go take care of it. I know. I, you get a little, a little more relaxed with that. You can kind of, I, I do the, where's it? I do the squeeze. I did it on this one, right? Because I'm like, are these dry? When we took the squeeze first test. Calibra yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, out, yeah, and I did kind of the squeeze test. Yep. Like it, it shouldn't crack. Like this actually might be a little, a little dry. In the it, weather's been tough here in New England. Yeah, totally. I was telling Jason before the show. Totally, I've been dumping mm -hmm. uh, distilled water into my humidification device. Like there's no when it gets mm -hmm. below 20 degrees, that humidity falls, yep. temperature drops, and in New England, right? Again, it depends on where you live. In New England, especially in any colder climate, you've got to dump tons yep. of humidity into your humidors just to keep up with the environment. My upkeep goes up in November till about mm -hmm. probably. Pretty soon, like Marchish, I would think. Right? When it hits the summer, then you do it in New England, right? You do the flip side. Yeah, because now it's super humid. You're mm -hmm. actually removing humidity. Yes. You, you're you're drying out your beads as best you can. Actually, uh, put them in the refrigerator, regular refrigerator, not thermoelectric. Regular refrigerator will draw the moisture out of your beads. Then you stick them back in your humidor so they can absorb mm -hmm. that excess uh, moisture and ultimately mm -hmm. humidity. I'm waiting for you to stick your. Humidor in the server room. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm waiting for that. Okay, yeah, yeah, guys, yeah. we're gonna make some room in the server room and get, get our humidor in there. That's temperature it. control in there. <laughs> That's it. I mean, a temperature controlled humidor is good. But anyway, cigar prices are going up. I mean, there's mm -hmm. nothing. I don't know what to say about that. Like it's. It is. It is what it is. Everyone's right now. got the it price is what increases it is right now. Yep. Unfortunately. So that's why I just keep chasing, baby. Yeah, I think that's it. I think finding deals. I think um, mm -hmm. getting a bigger humidor and stocking up is the way to go. Because I mean, these things don't go. They right. don't go bad. Again, right. depends on the cigar and, and all those things. You get about a ten year window with most cigars. I'd say the window of ten years is probably where yeah. you want to where you want to be. And then again, the community aspect. I mean, giving cigars, trading mm -hmm. cigars, coming here. I've had so many great experiences just coming here with cigars because. It's become my family, my community. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And the experiences you guys have given me in the cigar world. I, I honestly think you two mofos created this monster that created you're talking monster. about right now. <laughs> I really do. Uh, you know, it, it, it is. And, and you guys have given me an education. That's why I love the whole community thing that we were just talking about. 
right? Mm-hmm. And, and I get educated, I get, I get experiences from other people, I learn from other people, and I dig that, that's what I like. Well, you talk about the cigar community, that, that's how Paul and I met mm-hmm. from a cigar event. It was a, a blending event with Jose Blanco. Yeah. If you go way back in 2016, that, that, mm-hmm. that's when we met. It was September of 2016. Yeah, it's like awesome. we knew of each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we never, and then he's like, hi, I'm Paul Asadari. And I'm like, I know who you are. Hi, I'm Joe Snapper. I know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, and then, you know, we just started talking and, and it's led to. The, the crazy part is it, it, it mirrors the cybersecurity community. To- the security yeah. community yeah. is so friendly, so up for educating each other. So up for building relationships. It's an open community, well, and ninety percent of it anyway. Nine, well, yeah. And yeah. if I, I mean, but the same thing in cigars. I, yeah. You gotta in in security too. Like you gotta prove yourself, mm-hmm. right? Like no one likes it when someone comes in and just wants all the answers. If you ah, yeah, show right, that course. you're researching and trying to learn on yep. your own, and you yep. want guidance and, and help, that's most it. people. That's right. Adrian thinks correct. Ninety percent more sure. than willing to help. Right. Right. And dude, that's that's high in any community, though. I yeah. mean, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? Ninety percent is is high in any community for that level of engagement and wanting to be involved, I, and that's why mm-hmm. I love it. And if I could take a moment to say, like, you and Coop, like, you guys are freaking pioneers when you put this all platform together, like the Story Geeks platform. Like, when, when I mean, this show is what nine years old, ten years old. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and now with COVID, there has been a huge resurgence of cigar podcast. Yeah, out all there. Podca- all podcasts. Well, well, well yeah, 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 all podcasts, but like cigar podcasts that are related to the community. And it's like, dude, like for you to compare like the cybersecurity community and the cigar community, and for you to come up with a business model that supports platform mm-hmm. for you, like in and it's not like you did this like two years ago. You did like like talk about like like the it, it, I still get giddy mm-hmm. when I'm here working in the cybersecurity and doing story geeks and all of that. It's like like you put this together and for you to have that that forethought, like mm-hmm. yeah, podcast is gonna be a thing in the cigar world. And then now you have, you know, everybody's got a little podcast doing their thing and it it just it just kinda makes I mean, me chuckle. Yeah, or early to market. And it's is, great when they come together too, like Fuente Con out at uh out in Vegas. Yes. There is a, there is some overlap yeah. certainly yeah no it's good it's, early it's, to market is I- important I have not com- the only thing but certainly I have that conversation all the time about Security Weekly and your your insight into where the community was going mm-hmm. to do this how many years ago now fifteen sixteen we started 16? in two thousand five yeah I mean come on and Story it, Geeks was what twenty ten ish. When did we start Story Geeks I don't know I, it, it it was a, it was on for a while. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. just kudos to that forethought, you know. Like my MacBook from two thousand four, that I obviously don't use anymore. I don't know how it got there. I found it the other day in like a box and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. It had a Story Geek sticker on, Beautiful. and I'm like, That's "Oh awesome. my god!" That's awesome. I'm like, "This is yeah, crazy. So how the hell some, did I get this sticker?" On? It was yeah. 20, 2011. 2011? October October twenty eleven was episode one. Wow, that's crazy. Where we featured a tatuaje, the face. Nice. Yep. Um, where was it going next? Hold OG. <laughs> OG. <laughs> OG. <laughs> oh, uh, I smoked the Particus uh, Limited Reserve Dakotas 2021. Mm. Really good cigar. Mm-hmm. I like that one. Um, I don't know if it deserves like a higher price tag or like a whole bunch of seeking out but it's a really it's a really good cigar nice uh i do want to say uh let's see what was the the wrapper is cameroon so the 2020 was a cameroon and i think the 2021 as well is like legit cameroon like from cameroon mm. africa which i can't even imagine now with the pandemic <clears throat> how the fuck are you getting cigar wrapper tobacco out of Cameroon, Africa <laughs> with old supply yeah. chain issues like that right, 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 has right. to be super difficult. Mm. Um, but yeah, they, they come out with this cigar. They've come with this cigar for quite some time. Um, I, I've smoked some. I've, I've definitely been at Joyles where they had like tons of previous releases of this uh, Dakota cigar. Uh, and it, I smoked a couple of the older ones, and they're really good. I want to say they all, I think they all have that Cameroon uh, wrapper on it. But the 2021 is the one that just came out. 
Uh, and it's really good. It comes in its individual wrapped coffin. They're like fifteen ish dollars. Mm -hmm. Again, price is so hard when we quote that on the show, right? Yeah, yeah. It depends on where you find it, whether it's on sale, whether it's local, what your taxes are. Mm -hmm. You know, give or take, definitely uh, several dollars. You know, per <laughs> cigar. <laughs> when we say that, fifteen ish dollars. Um, it's 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 pretty good. I I implore you to uh, to seek it out. Will, try try try. Try like a fiver or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Th this right. show, this show got me to want to find the um, skinny monster Jason, like we talked That's about. Before. I have, I have some skinny monster boxes somewhere. One. You can find the monster series is really difficult to navigate, right? Because he came out with a regular release for so many years, yeah, yeah. and then he came out with the pudgy monsters, which were short robustos. Then he came out with the skinny monsters, <laughs> which were like lanceros. There's a whole bunch. I mean, we could do a whole episode yeah. and just really focus on the Monster Series cigars and we'd probably fill up an hour just talking about uh, the Monster Series. I'll do this the easy way. If you want to sell some cigars to Jason, email me at <laughs> Joe H at StogieGeeks.com and I'll put you in touch with him. Love it. It'll be done. The hunt, baby. The hunt. <laughs> some of the earlier ones people say were the best, the original release. Yeah. It was like the Drac and the Boar. I People say some of those early ones were mm -hmm. the were the best, but then by the time I had found one, it the cigars were so aged that you can't really compare. And that's happened with Padron Millennium mm. and a couple other cigars where they're like when this there was an Avo ah. limited release too. I remember folks at Joyos talking about those two in particular. Yeah. There was an Avo limited edition, I don't remember what it was, in Padron Millennium and the original Tatawahe Monster Series ones, like Drac Boar early ones. They're like that was friggin' awesome when it first came out. And then, like, you, you know, you trade or whatever yep, you find. Yep. And, like, by the time you smoke it, it could be 10-plus years later, and you're like, that was good. And, and the person that smoked the original is like, yeah, when it came out, it was, it was at its mm -hmm. peak. At its peak. So, but you don't know. It's uh, right. Part of this whole thing, too, is gambling. Sure. Right? Yeah, it's 100%. gambling. Like, 100%. Do I, I buy this cigar... Do I buy one? Do I buy five? Do I buy a box? Struggle I have like, every day. Do I buy one <laughs> and then I smoke it and it's amazing and then I buy a box and I smoke that one out of the box and that's not as good as the original one that I smoked? Like it's mm. a lot of this is gambling too, Jason. I've, I've really been buying is. three or five mm -hmm. and you know I'll let one sit for 60 days and smoke it. I'll let another one sit for over a year, right? If I really like it after the 60 days, I'll go <laughs> buy more obviously, but you know. The thing... <laughs> The thing is, though, it could be past this prime or not available after you figure sure. out it's yeah, great. Yeah, that's, that's the gamble. That's the hard, that's, that's the, gamble. the gamble. That's the gamble. So yeah. you buy a box, and then you sit on it, and it could be crap. Them. <laughs> that's the struggle it was the I love. <laughs> La Aurora Cien Años. I think that was the one. It was a Robusto with the dark mm. wrapper on it. And, like, the first box that the shop got, we all smoked them as soon as they came in. And we're like, that's one of the best cigars I've ever smoked. And then they're gone. Yeah, and then they release them again, and so I grabbed a box plus like a fifteen pack off of someone I traded or mm -hmm. bought from, right? And I smoked those. I'm like, it's not not as good. All right, I'll let, maybe they they need to rest. And then a year goes by, like you said, and then I'm like, no, nope, still not good. Two years goes by, yeah. three years, five years. It's got to be going on five years now. And I'm like, this just wasn't great. Yeah, that's. I don't know. It's part of the fun, but also part it of is. the frustration. It yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it's one of those things where I it's I take the risk. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's that, again, yep. that's part of the fun of the hunt. Honestly, it really is knowing that there's going to be the ones that you just don't jive with. Right. The one, yep. That's it. It's part of it. You never know. Yep. Big poppy. Big poppy. You were you were Hall all of, excited. Hall of Fame, baby. The All Big the Poppy fame. Cigar is not that great, though. It isn't that great. Mm. For me, it's about the, the New England nostalgia. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I mean, Big Poppy was a was, uh, uh, you know, baseball player that when I'm following, I was following baseball, uh, was a the lot, man. A lot of people know? hate us right now. I'm wearing the Brady jersey. Yeah. Got, and he's, he's got, a Patriots got, hat. My Patriots hat, baby. And a lot so, of haters out there. You know what? For me, it's the nostalgia. Brady's place. retired, though. I yes. Just, I, I, like, I, people are like, oh, he's going to come back and play for XYZ no, team. No, no, I'm no. like, well. He's going to do a one-day contract with the Patriots and retire as a Patriot. No. But, yes. No, uh, yes. both well, of you. Hold on, hold no, on. No, no, yeah. No, no. No. no, hold on. Jason said that, not me. <laughs> the way I understand it is Tampa Bay is holding on to his contract. So, like, if he comes back, 
He's got to come back to Tampa Bay because they're holding on to the contract. Yeah. Just on the off chance mm. he might come back, if you're Tampa Bay, you you want Brady yeah. right to come back. But I think Brady's done. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Say whatever you want. I, he's the greatest quarterback of all time. That, fight guaranteed. me on that now. I mean, yes, yeah. no, truth, I truth, agree. Truth, truth, truth. With the greatest quarterback of all time, he will not come back for one game. Historically, it is tough. Any sport, when you are at the top of your sport, it is hard to say goodbye. I mm. think Brady's going to take a year off. He's going to get bigger. He's going to get stronger. And he's going to do another gig. There is no way. He's going to come back and play football? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 No, no. Yes. He'll come. I think he's going to take a year off and do his thing. There's no way he's come back for one game. But I, he, one day contract. I didn't no, say no, a game. no, no, no. Not oh, a game. A I one day contract. Yeah. So, he, here, here's what people do to retire with their original, original team. team. They, they sign a one day contract. Okay. Right? So you retire. So you can as retire a as a patriot. Right. It's a one-day contract. Nah, I, I think I think he'll work the the paperwork. I think Robert it's just Kraft paperwork. will. Yeah. Yeah. I think Robert Kraft will make a deal. And oh, he'll he'd re- make that deal all day all long. day long. Why not? I mean, Tom Brady's like one of his sons. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, he's going to sign a one-day contract, retire with the Patriots. He will play another season. Uh, no, <laughs> he's <laughs> done. You think Rodgers is done too? Uh, that's a hot maybe. That's know. a hot. It's different. Rodgers only has one Super Bowl. People are giving him a whole But ration. they're different people. Like Brady, yeah. he just has like the whole, he's the whole package. He's you got know? the whole TB12 thing to retire. Yeah. I mean, he's been setting that up for years. That's what he's going to go do. That's my. I'm son. calling it one day contract retire Patriot. Yep. Okay. That's what I'm saying. That's cool. <laughs> he's done. We'll talk about this in a year. <laughs> Rodgers, we'll see. I don't know. The jury's kind of out on, on Rodgers, right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Not not even the same wheelhouse. No, not even the same. No, we'll see what happens. Yeah, but anyway, Big Poppy. Yeah, inducted see. into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Baseball Hall of Fame. A lot of controversy up, about big that. Big up to too. him. Big up to him. Not about Big Poppy, but about but about the, the well, Hall of I Fame. Mean, obviously, yeah. there's a lot of controversy around baseball, especially in certain eras. Well, because right? you got Clemens, Bonds, uh, all those dudes who were Pete Rose. Did Pete Rose ever get into the Hall? Did they ever I, exonerate I him? No, I don't think no, they did. No, right? No. 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 Nope. But again, funny what? story, Adrian, about you mentioned Casa Fuente and Fuente Con, right? So when we go to, uh, I think we've talked about this on Stogie Geeks before, right? But when we go out to Las Vegas for hacker conferences, several happen out in Las Vegas, two big ones, Black Hat and Def Con. Mm-hmm. We all hang out at Casa Fuente. And right, right across from Casa Fuente in the Caesars Forum shops is like a sports memorabilia yes. store. I don't remember. And what Pete the, Rose is in there signing Pete baseball. Pete Rose used to be in there. <laughs> All really? the time, all, all the time, the time you'd all see time. Pete Rose in there signing stuff. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yep, I've been there. <laughs> it's it's like his uh, Comic Con circuit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actors who aren't working he anymore. A, he had a Vegas had circuit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. big roles or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So I got a couple <clears throat> of big poppies in my humidor just for nostalgia. Just for nostalgia. Just for nostalgia. Right. Again, not a great cigar, but no, yeah. not, and I'm not expecting it to be. But whatever. It yeah. is. It is what it is. It's part of. It's part of. Speaking of football, I've got some of those LFD football cigars. Oh, do you? Have you seen those? Yeah. yeah the ones that look. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've got yeah. a, a couple of different. I think I've got two from two different years yeah, yeah. that, again, I haven't smoked because I'm like, I have an LFD football cigar. I'm like, this is really <laughs> cool. Like, it looks like a football. Like, yeah, yeah, Adrian, yeah. I don't know if you've seen them, Adrian, but the tobacco <laughs> no. that they um, uh, imprint, they like glue the tobacco. It's very, It's a work of art. It is. They you guys put, should do an episode where you just do a tour of your humidors and like the it's a interesting stuff request. that you've got. Yeah, popular yeah. request. I I uh, was monitoring the wrong chat, mm. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, there's no no one's really yeah. chatting. Manny's on our chat, and Manny said that uh, we should smoke all three at once, all the cigars. So I'm catching up with it there. All th- of what three? All three. All, all of the what? Uh, uh, the, all smoke the smoke at once. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I have at <laughs> once. <laughs> I was at a cigar tasting and I was smoking multiple cigars at once. <laughs> you know the ones where they, um, shit, I forget what they call them. Now. There's a name for them, but they take uh, all of the filler components mm. and they roll a cigar with just that one filler tobacco. Mm-hmm. There's a name for it that escapes me at the moment, but and so I was like smoking like two or three. I have pictures of me smoking three yeah. of the. I can't think of the name. Three of them at once, but it was just that one filler tobacco, mm. and that's part of the blending process. The primer is primer is it? Mm, no, it's not the primer. Okay. It, it so it, part of the blending process is they take 
one type of tobacco from mm. one crop of uh, plants from one priming and they roll it together and you smoke it and you're like, okay, that's what that flavor will bring. Then you may take a different plant from a different priming and they roll that into a mm. small little cigar and you smoke that. And then you're like, I think that would go good with this one. And that's how you bring your blend together. And then you roll a cigar with the three or two or mm. seven or eight, whatever different fillers together and see how that tobacco goes together. Then you put the binder and then the wrapper on it to, mm. to finish the, the cigar. So the one time I did, to Manny's point, smoke multiple cigars mm -hmm. at, at once was <laughs> they it was like smoking one cigar because they were from a yeah, specific yeah. plant and priming, you know, in, in those cigars. We and it that. was not, it was not great. Like I got a headache. Like it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was bad. It was bad. It was, yeah. I don't know how, I mean, the folks that uh, blend cigars and, and do that, it's a lot, of, it's a lot of smoking, mm. a lot of cleansing your palate. Yeah. It, it takes a lot of focus and a lot of energy too. Like it, your palate gets tired of like the whole mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did that with the Alec Bradley, uh, tasting here yeah it's a lot of laura with, with, with La aurora had a event jose blanco light, does it light your legacy right. was was the la logo uh, jose La's does it La differently La where you'll have different he has a cigar that has like four or five different wrappers on it mm -hmm. so yes. they'll wrap one portion of the cigar with one wrapper one with the so you can see how the filler and the binder it interacts with the different wrappers in in the yeah. in a blend yeah it's pretty cool yep and then they did like the legacy with with uh Lotterara. then Alec Bradley separates it and then we did it here on Story Geeks and it was it was cool but you do get a lot of it's a it's a lot to consume you got to cleanse your palate i recommend Story Geeks listeners you know anyone that hasn't done a blending seminar of any mm -hmm. type where you smoke the individual components of a blend then you might smoke with the binder. Like there, there's all different ways they put it together. You have to do one at least once in your lifetime mm -hmm. to really in that because that helps you as a cigar smoker really uh, not one like one appreciate yeah the final product, but also helps you kind of get in tune with your palate. Mm -hmm. You know we hear these people from COVID, and I feel bad they lose their sense of taste and smell. That really that really sucks. One of yeah. the ways they're getting it back is stuff that we've done in cigars to really get in tune with your palate, to smoke the individual components of a cigar and go, where is that in my flavor wheel? Is that mm. chocolate? Is mm. that cedar? Is is that whatever it is, right? Yeah. And, and make those associations in your brain. Right. Whether your palate has been disrupted from some medical issue such as COVID or, or not, thankfully, hopefully not, um, but to make those associations in your brain reconnected yeah. is yeah. super important. So when I did one with uh, Manuela Noah, it was two things that helped cleanse your palate um, in your senses. Uh, it was uh, coffee beans mm -hmm. in uh, like a little glass bowl or, or cup or glass. And you sniff that and, and nice. putting that through your palate helped cleanse it. And then it was straight seltzer water. Mm -hmm. I think even particularly like without ice, like just straight mm -hmm. regular seltzer water helps cleanse your palate. So that's some of the tricks uh, they do to kind of cleanse it. So when you go from one part of the filler to the next part in between, you smell the coffee mm -hmm. beans, take a couple sips of the seltzer water that cleanses your senses and your nose and your palate, and then you smoke the next yeah. portion of it. You only do that so long before your palate just gets really, really yeah, yeah. like your, your brain gets tired, your palate gets tired, yeah. your mouth gets dry. Only so long. Because I also think that you're you're smoking it differently than if you were to just take a regular cigar. Cause, yes. Because your Different mind, because totally. your mind is hyper focused on trying to extract what the what that stick is all trying to produce. Like different. Yeah. All the nuances. Yes. So so you're, you're like almost you're like holding hyper, in on one. To hyper say, focusing yeah. and and, and, and you, you can you train get, it so that like when you smoke Criollo, you know, yep. ninety nine. Mm -hmm. If you smoke just that, then when you smoke a cigar that's the finished product. Mm -hmm. You th hope that your brain and your palate can work together to pick that out in the in the cigar. Yeah. But even I tell you what, even people that do that for a living, even they're sometimes really hard pressed to go like pick out what specific mm -hmm. types of tobacco or in what cigar. Mm -hmm. The the best of them will say like Yeah, I've been doing this my whole life. I've been mean, done this whole thing, but like yeah, now you really can't. You really can't tell. You really can't. They're, they're I, honest. They're very transparent. Yeah. Like you, like sometimes you guess right, but sometimes not. I I think you're right when it comes to a mixture of mm. of blending individual but, ones. Yeah, they do say that, Joe. Like, if you would give them a 
Oh, I almost had the name of it on the tip of my brain, too. <laughs> but if you gave them a pure Criollo 99, mm-hmm. just that particular plant from that priming. They can guess it. They can probably guess yeah. it. I, I actually yes. did a blending kit with um, with Rojas. And um, there's a lot of Criollo 98 in some of the stuff. And when I was on a tasting panel for Alec Bradley's new stick that's actually scheduled to come out this July... Um, I guessed what it was on the pre-draw. Nice. But in defense of it, the only reason why was because, like, Criollo 98, like, sticks out in my yeah, palette. Yeah, yeah, You got certain like, ones like you can pick can, out, yeah. Same thing with Agonosa Leaf. I did one with the cigar shop in Newport where I ha- he just gave it to me. It was unlisted, and now it's a house stick for him. And I was like, Agonosa Leaf makes this. Mm-hmm. And so, like, it's weird because the, the film that agonosa leaf the metallic film that it leaves on my palate yeah it's just so distinct you know to me because you've made those associations because i made the brain. associations right. but like i can guess obviously captain obvious region Nicol- it's the same you know. way with sommeliers right uh yep. the sour grapes documentary that i want to watch right it was the guy that was scamming all these billionaires and you know the collector was like this is this particular wine Mm -hmm. and the sommelier tasted he's like absolutely not like totally off everything is off about it it's because they've trained those associations Mm -hmm. with their palate Mm -hmm. taste flavor smell the whole the whole thing to go like yeah no it's it's training it's a skill yeah in an art there's a couple that really stick out in my memory yeah um but it's you know you can tell a dominican from a nicaragua sure yeah in general because because the characteristics is so unique (sighs) Right, you know what I mean, um, but yeah, it, to to hyper focus on that, I believe it's a lot of hype. That's why some reviews, oh, I'm getting you know the zest. Some of them are, are really prevalent, like the Davidoff hay. Oh, yeah, like that's a thing, right? You know what I Absolutely. mean? Absolutely, you know. So I don't know. Well, thank you everyone for listening and watching this edition of the Stoic Geek Show. It's been so much fun. Absolutely, it's been a blast. We'll see everyone next month. Thanks for watching. <laughs>